KRC 1340 AM, Arkadelphia. KZYP 1310 AM and K281CK 104.1 Malvern. KYXK 106.9 FM, Gurdon. This is Coach Jill Thomas. This is Coach Jimmy Elvis. And you're listening to Ready Basketball. It's time for Ready's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Ready's Basketball is brought to you by Brookshire's, Chicken Express, Domino's, Java Primo, Print Mania, Holiday Inn of Caddo Valley, Ready Bookstore. Ready's Basketball also brought to you by Southern Bancor, The Plaza at Twin Rivers, SCM Architects, Slim and Shorty, Sodexo, Southwest Auto Collection, Southwest Sporting Goods, and Wendy. Now, let's head courtside to the voice of the ready, Cyrus Witte. Welcome to Arkadelphia, Arkansas, to the campus of Henderson State University and to the Duke Well Center as we get you set for a big battle between the Henderson State Reddies and their visitors tonight, the Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils. I appreciate you joining us this evening. I'm Cyrus Wittig. I'm joined by my broadcast partner, David Sally. And you are listening to the Domino's pregame show while listening to Reddy's Basketball. Why not enjoy a fresh, hot Domino's pizza? Pick up a pizza at 3120 Pine Street in Arkadelphia by giving them a call at 870-246-3131 or order online at www.dominos.com. Domino's Pizza is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. Well, David, I've got a little bit of deja vu in walking into the gym. So now we're getting into really the, the teeth, the, the, the middle, the really the latter portion of this GAC regular season schedule. And we expected this, but it's kind of odd seeing, you know, teams three, four, four times in a regular season. And Henderson State welcomes a very familiar foe um, and, and a pesky foe into the Duke Wells Center tonight in the Arkansas Montefil Monticello Bull Weevils. I think pesky is definitely the right word, Cyrus, and it is definitely weird to see this team for the third time in this season, and it's weird to see everyone as many times as we have, but particularly this team, a team that Henderson State to just flat out has struggled with the last few years. Henderson State has lost 10 of the last 11 matchups they've had against UAM. The one that they won came in the GAC tournament last season, so they picked the right time to win one, but it's just been a struggle against this team, and playing them three, four times in a season doesn't make it any easier. We'll see if they can get over the hump tonight. This is a very good UAM team, though, that shoots the ball very well. They're on top of the division standings for a reason, and it's going to take a really good game, probably Henderson's best game of the season, to get a win here tonight. Yeah, David, you, you mentioned they shoot the ball really well. I think that might be an understatement. Uh, you know, we were. I was looking as you know, previewing this game, getting my thoughts together, and I, I, we all knew Monticello was a great shooting team, leading the leading the GAC at 40, about up over 40 percent per game. But they're not just leading the GAC; they're close to tops in the country. Yeah, very close to tops in the country. In fact, if you only take teams that have played 10 or more games, they are number one in the country. They're shooting just under 42 percent as a team from the three-point line, which is just staggering. They've got several guys who have been doing it all year long. You got Dewan Jones. You know, you've got a lot of different dudes that can stretch it. McDuffie, who really shoots it well, and he has absolutely killed the Reddies in the last few matchups. His numbers are off the charts against Henderson State. You know, Henderson, they've got to make life difficult for these Monticello shooters tonight, and they got to take care of the ball. That's something they've struggled with in their last few matchups against the Weevils. If they can do those two things, they're going to have a chance. But, again, it's going to take a really big effort because this UAM team very well might be the best team in the conference this year. We'll take a break here on the Domino's pregame show. When we come back, we'll step into the Brookshire Coaches Corner with head coach Jimmy Elgis after that. We'll have the Slim and Shorty's keys to the game. And finally, we'll get you set for tip with the Chicken Express starting lineups. So keep it here. It's all coming up on the Domino's pregame show on the Henderson State Sports Network. Brookshire's is proud to be a supporter of Reddy's Basketball. Stop by your friendly local grocery for quality, convenience, and service. Score points of your own with Brookshire's Your Points, saving you on groceries and fuel. Looking to change up the game? Shop Brookshire's online ordering and pickup. Get free pickup and pick up your groceries in as little as two hours. Score big and be the MVP this season as we cheer on the HSU Reddies.
Picture this. It's Monday afternoon and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee $7.99 plus tax, of course. Now, picture this. It's Friday and you're at Domino's buying a large three-topping pizza. You give the Domino's employee more than you paid Monday. You feel bamboozled. But then, you hear this. Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. And so you danced and ate Domino's. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. What if you could help someone start a small business, make a family's dream of home ownership a reality, or even help a young child learn the importance of saving? By banking with Southern Bank Corp, you're supporting your own financial journey and also families in your community dreaming of a brighter future. That's what it means when we say we're wealth builders for everyone, and we hope you'll join us in ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to build a brighter future. Stop by any of our locations or visit us on the web at banksouthern.com to learn more. Southern Bank Corp, wealth builders for everyone. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show as the Reddies get set to host the Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils. It's time now for our Coach's Corner with head coach Jimmy Elgis, brought to you by Brookshire's. Coach, you took care of Wachita Baptist on Monday in a 59-55 to win. The Reddies faced a fair amount of zone defense in that one. Did you spend any time this week reviewing your zone offense in case you see that matchup again tonight? No. Um, Monticello plays 99% man. I, I think they've, with their success against us to this point this year, I think we're not anticipating seeing that, but we did via film. Um, and, and really... With Wachita, it was more or less the the two two one was really slowing us down. It was causing us just to um, not have as much thrust into our half court offense. And so what we did is we just showed the guys of how we want to um, extend our second line against the two two one and be able to throw it up over the top, or by stretching out that second line, it's going to allow Little Quan or your point guard to bring the ball up into a thrust and get right into your zone offense quicker. That was more or less the. I think mm-hmm. our stuff was just a little bit. A um, little bit slower than normal because we just didn't have that back line. We talked to the guys at halftime about it, but um, yeah. So I think that got into our team, uh, you know, attacking that zone a little bit. Um, but we didn't work on it. We showed it on film. Right. And, you know, we by NCA rules, Cyrus, on our week is defined as Sunday to Saturday, and you have to take one day off per week. And when you have a three-game week, meaning we play Monday at Wachita. Thursday, Monticello, and Saturday, I think it's Harding, um, you have to take one day off. So after the Wachita game on Monday, we practiced Sunday. Um, Wachita Monday, we took off on Tuesday. And we had a real light workout on Wednesday, play Thursday, light workout Friday, and play Saturday. Mm-hmm. So not a lot of time to, you know, you'd love, I'd love to be able to work on that right. on zone offense or, or maybe our zone defense or whatever. Sure. whatever. But time is so valuable, and getting the kids off their feet, I think, is really important this time of year. Arkansas Monticello's Denzel McDuffie has been a really tough matchup for the Reddies as of late. McDuffie averaging 15 points and 12 rebounds in the last five meetings between these two teams. How can, how can you slow him down tonight? you got to have different bodies on him. You know, he's a high-energy guy. He's a very talented player. Um, he's a versatile player. You know, they, they run some isolation for him on, on the elbow. Um, he goes and gets second shots. Uh, if he's open on the perimeter, he can make a perimeter jump shot, three-pointer. He tacks in transition. He crashes the glass. He's just hes one of those versatile energy guys. And I think with Monticello, and, and especially with him, you've got to match their energy. You've got to match their toughness. You've got to match their physicality. And he, he's a tremendous player. Um, I hope he, he plays the three and the four. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have multiple guys on him from the perimeter. You know, you'll have X on him at times. You'll have Malik on him at times. And then he also swings down and plays the, the four for them. So you'll have Jeremiah on him at times and Yuri on him at times. So, um, you know, it's a big job. We're going to have to match his energy and, and just really pay attention to him as a team. UAM currently leads the Eastern Division of the GAC. What's your me- message to the guys heading into this matchup? 
Um, you know, not to really, we don't really scoreboard watch or, or look at the standings or anything like that tremendously. We, we, we just need to take one game, one day, one drill, one practice at a time until they tell us to put our balls up until, you know, we, we don't have any more basketball left to play. Until then, we choose to, to get better every day, you know, and whatever we decide to do, film, you know, big film day on, on Wednesday, um, I want to get better today and play better than what we did, not have so many long stretches of not scoring or turning it over like we did the last time at Monticello. So, um, you know, the bottom line is it doesn't matter if it's Harding, Wachita, Tech, Southern Arkansas, or Monticello. Mm -hmm. Everybody, in my opinion, everybody in this league is well-schooled, well-coached. You've got to bring it, and you've got to bring energy and execution and togetherness and – you know, I, I like to just focus on us and yeah. what we need to do better today more so than we're playing, a, sure. you know, the team that's second or first or whatever mm -hmm. anybody is. Um, that's just my philosophy, yeah. you know, yeah. just, just how to get the guys through the season. Coach, I appreciate the time. Best of luck against the Bull Weevils. No problem, Cyrus. Thank you. That was today's Brookshire's Coach's Corner with head coach Jimmy Elgus. Stop by your local Brookshire's for quality, convenience, and service. And stick around. There's much more to come right here in the Domino's pregame show on the Henderson State Sports Network. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame show as the Reddies get set to... Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Printmania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Printmania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Printmania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Printmania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Apparently, you've been ordering Domino's new bread twists as a decoy to keep others away from your pizza. Only you suddenly wanted more bread twists for yourself. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm, dunkable bread twists and flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon, like deciding between going to the dentist or DMV. So when it comes to giving you the best tasting problem you've ever had, sorry, you're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twists or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Brookshire's is proud to be a supporter of Reddy's Basketball. Stop by your friendly local grocery for quality, convenience, and service. Score points of your own with Brookshire's Your Points, saving you on groceries and fuel. Looking to change up the game? Shop Brookshire's online ordering and pickup. Get free pickup and pick up your groceries in as little as two hours. Score big and be the MVP this season as we cheer on the HSU Reddy's. Welcome back to Arkadelphia. Just a few minutes before we tip this one off between the Reddies and their visitors tonight, the Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils. Time now for Keys to Victory, presented by Slim and Shorties. Slim and Shorties is perfect for food, friends, and fun in downtown Arkadelphia. Open Thursday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Slim and Shorties is the place to be for a great time with great friends. For more information, give them a call at 870-245-2365. David, I'll start with you. What do the Reddies need to do tonight to get a W? It all starts with limiting UAM from the three-point line to me just because of how good they are from out there. Really, they're just a great shooting team in general. They've only shot under 42% from the field one time this entire season, uh, but it, particularly from behind the three-point line. Not only are they very, very good from out there shooting-wise, but they're very efficient. They don't take quite as many as you might think they would for a team that shoots that well, but they do basically make the ones they take and you got to make sure that you're getting a hand up and making those shots as difficult as possible tonight for Henderson State and I think it goes on the other side of the court too for the Reddies they got to hit their fair share they've only made double digit three-pointers in one game this year 
tonight would be a really good time to get their second one of those. Yeah, David, to piggyback, piggyback off of that, the Reddies shot the ball really well last uh, last time out on Monday night against Watchdog Baptist across the street and went eight for 18 from three, a little under 45%. In their first meeting with Watchdog Baptist, the Reddies were 14 of 29, but outside of Watchdog Baptist, the Reddies are shooting 47% from three in two games against Watchdog Baptist this year. Against all other opponents, though, 30%. That number's got to come up. It, it, on, a, on a better note, in this building, the last time against UAM, the Reddies were 8 of 17, 47%. If the Reddies are around that uh, around that uh, efficiency tonight, it definitely increases their chances. My key to the game uh, is something we also talked about at the top of the broadcast, turnovers. The Reddies have struggled giving away the ball this season, 11th in the GAC out of 12 teams, and turnovers turning it over 16.7 time, times per game, 10th uh, in the GAC in turnover margin, minus 2.4. UAM, on the other hand, excellent at keeping the ball and turning the other team over. UAM, third in the league out of 12 teams in turnovers, 12.6 per game, plus 4.5 which is not only first in the GAC in turnover margin, it's 10th in the NCAA in turnover margin. So they are very good at stealing ex extra possessions. The Reddies are, the Reddies in two games against UAM this season, 21 assists to 37 turnovers. UAM against the Reddies, 34 assists to 21 turnovers. So basically an inverse statistic right there. That's got to change, and like you said, David, three-point shooting, those will be the two big stories tonight. Well, those stats right there tell you why UAM is having so much success this season. If you can shoot the ball and take care of the ball, that's going to take you a long way. The one thing UAM doesn't do well that the Reddies do well is rebound, though, and I think that could be the great equalizer tonight for Henderson State. They have to hit the glass hard as well. Starting lineups presented by Chicken Express. Stop by Chicken Express after the game where you get fast and friendly service for the best quality food. Chicken Express, the home of legendary Express tenders and chicken -y sweet tea. So the starters for UAM tonight is going to be Dewan Jones. He's a 5'11 junior from Colleen, Texas. He leads the GAC in assist to turnover ratio. He's averaging 20 points a game in two matchups against HSU this year. Alongside him is Miles Daniels. He's shooting 52% from the three-point line this year. Absolutely unbelievable. A 6'3 senior from Gulfport, Mississippi. Lemmy Howard is their big guy. He's a 6'8 senior from Belzoni, Mississippi, second in the GAC in field goal percentage. Kendall Frey is going to start next to him. He's a 6'5 junior from Los Angeles, California. He is seventh in the GAC in three-point percentage, and he scored 19 points the other night against Wachita Baptist in Arkadelphia, so he had a good game his last trip to town. The fifth starter for EAM is Max Warren. He's a 6'5 junior from Manchester, Georgia. For your Henderson State Reddies, Quan Marshall back in the end of the starting lineup at full strength after missing a few uh, starts, missing a few games actually as well earlier in the season with an upper body injury. Marshall, 6'2 senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Joining Marshall in the backcourt is Xavier Davenport, 6'3", senior out of Brooklyn, New York. He is fifth in the GAC in steals per game. Malik Riddle trying to get will try to get back on track tonight. He's a 6'6", junior out of Holly Springs, Mississippi. Just four for, uh, four for 16 combined from the field in his last two games, 11 of 35 from the field in the last four. After hitting 11 field goals in the against Washtenaw Baptist alone, he scored 32 points in that game. That's the most points by a Reddies player in any game this season. In the front court, Jeremiah Tony, he's playing well. 6'5", senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. He's averaging uh, 12 points on 52% shooting in the last four games. Has scored in double figures in three of the last four. And finally, the man in the middle, Raquan Rogers, a 6'8 senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. Second on the team in points, 13.3. And first on the team in rebounds, 8.5 per game. He went four for five in the second meeting against Monticello this season, but played just 16 minutes due to foul trouble. So the Reddies will need an excellent performance from Raekwon if they want to get their first win over the UAM this season. Howard and Rogers meet in the middle to tip it. It's won by the Reddies who wear white and move right to left. Henderson State starts on offense here against their longtime rivals from the south. Arkansas Monticello Bowl Weevils. Reddies on offense and away from the ball. Foul whistled on Arkansas Monticello. That is Max Warren's first, team's first. And the Reddies will take it from the baseline. Quan Marshall, the trigger man. He finds Davenport rolling around his screen. Baseline J short. But a foul whistled on Miles Daniels, and Davenport 
to the line to shoot two after Daniels commits the cardinal sin, fouling the jump shooter. That's a pretty consistent inbounds play from Henderson this season. Run Xavier Davenport off that little screen. It's actually been pretty effective. He usually gets that shot off that inbounds play and gets bailed out right there as he gets fouled. Xavier Davenport to the line where he gets the roll on the first free throw. Davenport, 71% from the line this season. Gets them both, and the Ruddies start the game with a two-point lead and apply a little bit of full-court pressure. Dewan Jones for the Weevils. Walks it up into the front court. Daniels handles top of the key. Daniels in neon pink shoes. Now Frey works it to Jones, top of the key, gets a screen from Howard, back to Howard. Elbow extended, drops it down to Warren. He goes inside, lays it up, too strong. Rebound Rogers, who clears for the Reddies. HSU up two zip on their second offensive possession. Rogers handling at the left block, back and down on Warren. Spins left, takes contact, throws it up, won't fall. Tip up and in by Tony. One-handed it from the right block. A deft play by Tony. Nice touch. And the Reddies take a 4-0 lead. And that's where the rebounding can help Henderson State tonight. They're going to be much better on the glass than UAM in all likelihood. Got to take advantage like Dave JT did just right there. 4-0 Henderson. 18-45 to play in the first half. Daniels drives inside, is fouled by Quan Marshall. His first, team's first. Monticello already with two fouls as a team in the first minute and 15 seconds of this ball game. So... An early indication from the referees. It'll be called tightly. Daniels curls around a screen, goes baseline far side, up and under, doesn't get the roll. Another rebound for Rodgers, his second, and the Reddies clear it. Henderson stayed up 4-0. Looking to add to their early lead. Tony. Shaded right side of the top of the key, goes to Rodgers, pump fakes from 16, far side near the baseline. Rodgers goes baseline, jump stops, spins back, inside at the top of the restricted circle and scores with the left hand. Henderson State, an early touchdown lead, 6-0, 18-12 to play in the first half. Definitely the most promising start against UAM that Henderson has had in recent memory. Jones picks up his dribble, finds Frey on the Reddy's logo. Monticello on offense, Howard over the head pass to Warren. He finds Jones, top of the key. Jones a head fake, bounces to Howard. Howard near the right block, elevates and scores. That's just tough for Jeremiah Tony because Howard's probably got three inches on him right now. That was good defense. I don't know what else JT can do, but he just goes up, and that's a smooth stroke from that spot by Howard. Reddy's with the ball up 6-2, 17-40 to play in the opening period. And foul whistled on Kendall Frey as he tried to reach in on Malik Riddle about 35 feet away from the basket. Riddle wasn't even looking at the rim. Not a great foul for Frey to give away. His first, team's third, with 17.36 to play again in the first half. Ready's up 6-2. to two. They've gotten two from Tony, two from Davenport, and two from Rogers. Marshall's bounce pass to Davenport, out of bounds, and that's just a forced error, and although the Reddies wanted to get a play going, a little bit unnecessary. That was a really tough pass for to throw it 25 feet away from the basket. UAM really extends those passing lanes, making life difficult. Warren, head fake. With the left, finishes with the right. UAM has four in a row. Reddies lead, cut to two, six to four. 17-10 left, first half. Reddies on offense, Marshall swings it back to Tony. Tony at the elbow. Puts up a line drive jumper and knocks it down. Tony starts two for two. And the Reddy's back up four. Under the 17 minute mark here in the Duke Well Center. Jones picks up his dribble. Tries to go to Daniels to the right, unavailable. And Frey handles. Jones gets it back near the Don Dyer Court insignia. On the right wing, Jones pops inside. Now is hedged out and moves away 40 feet at the logo, Jones. Back to Howard. Howard steps into a right wing three off the mark. But the Reddies foul the jump shooter. Jeremiah Tony will send Lemmy Howard to the line for three shots. Good defensive possession by the Reddies up until that point. Just closed out a little bit too hard there if you're JT. He didn't close out hard enough on that first jumper by Howard there in the post. I think he kind of overcompensated there and looked like he got him on the arm. 
Howard to the line shooting three. Hits the first. As two more on the way. Howard, 6'8", senior from Belzoni, Mississippi. Bit of a suspect free throw shooter, 58% through 12 games, but the first two have looked pure. They certainly did, Cyrus. He didn't look like a 58% free throw shooter on either one of those. Third one on the way. Three for three. Field goal is up and good for Monticello. It's an 8-7 ball game. Ready's lead. They led 6-0. They've led the whole way. Davenport for the Reddies. 30 feet away from the basket. Crosses over on Daniels. Gives to Tony. Tony into the lane. Ten footer. Gets the roll from the left side of the lane. Tony on fire early. He's three for three. Six points to lead all scores. The Reddies up three. Ten to seven. Four minutes in. Next whistle brings us to our first media timeout. Jones. Far side McDuffie, he handles and gives to Frey. Now Jones looks inside, cross courts it to Frey. Baseline drive cut off, now McDuffie puts it on the deck. 18 footer, missed everything. It's saved by Howard, but they're gonna say the ball hit the end line. Good start for the Reddies. Henderson State, four for five from the field as we head to our first media timeout. They lead 10-7. We'll take a break on the Henderson State Sports Network. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Apparently, you've been ordering Domino's new bread twists as a decoy to keep others away from your pizza. Only you suddenly wanted more bread twists for yourself. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm dunkable bread twists and flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon, like deciding between going to the dentist or DMV. So when it comes to giving you the best tasting problem you've ever had, sorry, you're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twists or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Welcome back to the Duke Well Center here on the campus of Henderson State University. And a good start for the Reddies as we return from our first media timeout. Henderson State up 10 to 7. 15-42 to play in the first half. On the court for the Reddies. Four starters and one reserve. Raekwon Rogers, the only starter on the bench. Yuri Swinford takes his place, joined by Quan Marshall, Jeremiah Tony, Xavier Davenport, and Malik Riddle. Reddies on offense. Davenport curls around a screen, top of the key, thought about a three, turned it down, now finds Malik Riddle, he curls around one at the right wing, now drives baseline, lost it, and the Reddies give it away for the second time. Monticello takes it back, Dewan Jones, junior point guard out of Colleen, Texas, into the front court. Now Howard has it near the left elbow. He gives it back to Jones. Now McDuffie, top of the key. Frey bounces it in to Howard. Right block extended, 14 feet away on the baseline. Down to seven to shoot. Jones drives baseline on Marshall. Jones bounce past Frey, puts up the three. Around and out, offensive board. But Howard can't contain it. And it'll go back to the Reddies. Howard looked like he had a beat on it. Slipped out of his hands and Henderson State gets it back. Up three, 14-53 to play in the first half. Pretty good defense so far from Henderson State. UAM just two of six from the field, and that's kind of been a theme recently. Henderson State has been holding opponents to poor shooting percentages, but it's going to be tough to do that against UAM tonight over the long haul. Ready's basketball. Chenault touches it for the first time, goes to Damian Deer. His backdoor cut results in a layup, but he's too strong. Offensive rebound, Swinford. He gives to Tony who gives back to Deere on the baseline. That won't go. Another offensive board. Tony has it. Backs down on Howard. His shot is too strong, but Swinford gets the rebound. Henderson State stealing possessions. They're going to have about their fourth or fifth shot on this trip down. I can't count. Swinford 
Right elbow drives inside on Howard, takes contact, left it short, and he'll go to the line, and the Reddies talk about earning a trip. They stole about three or four offensive boards out of the hands of Monticello players. And that's what you got to do if you're Henderson State. Look at the rebounding already. It's eight Monticello, to zero. They don't even, Monticello doesn't have a single rebound. Eight to zero. So I'd say that's a good start for Henderson State on the glass. And this is great. Second chance, really fifth chance points on this possession. But that's what you got to do to win a game like this against a team like this. You got to dominate on the glass, which they have been early, and got to take advantage when you get those second chance opportunities. Yeah, we, I, I have mislay it by Deer, mislay it by Deer, miss jumper by Tony but all resulting in offensive rebounds and eventually resulting in two made free throws by Yuri Swinford. Henderson State's lead back up to five. 12 to seven. And the clock has not started. We have an issue with the clock. And I may have been the first one to notice that. I think the referee just said, uh, yeah, because I was looked up and I said, and I thought to myself that well, they haven't made it 12-7 yet. And then I, was looking at the clock and that was that thing wasn't moving so I think we've got it resolved Monticello will be Monticello's basketball here on the near side and the shot clock down to 23 and we're back in action with Dewan Jones 14 10 left in the first half for clarification again ready's up five Miles Daniels inside. Great verticality and a defensive stop by Rogers. Reddy's run away with it. Xavier Davenport. Offensive foul as he drove inside and tried to Euro step around Dewan Jones. And Jones draws the charge. Reddy's give it right back. Third turnover by HSU. He had the right idea to Euro step around the charge right there. He it looked like he just did it too late. Yep. He still went crashing in. I think he needed to Euro step almost a half second earlier. He would have avoided that contact because Graham Chenault was wide open. Weevil's back on offense. Down five. Jones gets around Deer to the basket, lays it up and in. Deer was expecting Jones to use the screen, and Jones blew right by him. 12 9 ball game. Ready's up three. Chenault handling on the GAC logo, left wing. Spins and gives to Swinford. Swinford. Open three, got it. Yuri Swinford, second three of the year. The Reddies take it, and they lead by six, 15 to nine. 13, 20 left in the first half. Henderson State, a hot start from the field. Dewan Jones at the left elbow, spins, gives to Warren. Now Alvarez Powell tries to answer with a three of his own, can't do it. Offensive board, Max Warren, he is pulled down by Raekwon Rogers. That'll be Rogers first, team's fourth. And Monticello will get it back as the shot clock is set to 20. That's also Monticello's first rebound of the game here, seven minutes in. That was your key to the game, David, or one of them. You had three-point shooting and rebounds, and Henderson State, although a very small sample size in three-pointers, winning that battle and dominating in rebounds. Nine ready's rebounds, one for the Bull Weevils. UAM restarts it. Under the 13 minute mark now, first half. Craddock handles, gets a screen from McDuffie. Now a screen from Warren at the top of the key. Goes to Jones, Jones puts one finger up. Calls the play, puts up the three, and banks it in. Thursday night, after hours. Cuts the lead in half, Reddy's up three. 15 to 12, Swinford out to Riddle. Long two. And it falls home. Two feet on the three-point line. Riddle got Craddock up in the air and cashed in from the left wing. Reddy's back up five, 17 to 12. HSU, six of 10 from the floor. Monticello, four of 10 as a team. Miles Daniels, the lethal three-point shooter looking for his shot. Back to Jones, right wing. Behind the arc, now McDuffie handles. McDuffie backs down on Marshall from 18 feet away. McDuffie. Jones with it. Jones rattles home the three at the top of the key. Jones is on fire. He at, he has been a ready killer this year, averaging 20 points in two games. He's already got eight of Monticello's 15 points. He's three for three. 11.50 to play first half. Next whistle brings us to our under 12 media timeout. Max Warren gave Quan Marshall the arm bar. That's an easy call. That's Warren's second. And that'll send us 
to our second immediate timeout. Reddy's shooting it well. Monticello starting to heat up, though. We got a two-point game here in the Duke Well Center. Reddy's 17, Weevils 15. You're listening to Reddy's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Java Primo is amazing coffee and so much more. Visit Java Primo Coffee House Cafe and more and discover just what more is. Friday and Saturday nights are ribeye nights. 16 plus ounces of premium bone-in French cut ribeye steak seasoned with espresso rub and grilled to perfection. Nightly dinner menus of pizza, salmon, tuna, steaks, and more begins at 4 p.m. Located on Main Street in Arkadelphia and on Central Avenue in Hot Springs. Java Primo has a little something more just for you. Henderson State University is one of the most affordable universities in Arkansas, and we offer the most competitive scholarships in the state. Our caring professors will challenge you to achieve your best potential. With more than 90 student organizations, new residence halls, and the beautiful DeGray Lake State Park just 15 minutes away, you will find the perfect fit at Henderson State. Come see us in Arkadelphia or visit hsu.edu to learn how you can live ready today. Welcome back to Arkadelphia, Henderson State. Up two, 17 to 15 as we return from our under 12 media timeout. And Dewan Jones doing most of the work early for the UAM Bulls. He's got eight of Monticello's 15 points. The Reddy's led so far by Jeremiah Tony. He's got six. Yuri Swinford off the bench with five. And Swinford come, had come into this game. He hadn't scored in the last three. Reddies have the basketball. Raekwon Rogers at the free throw line. Stop, pop, swish. Raekwon Rogers showing out a little bit, showing off his outside game. Reddies up four. That's just not something you see a big guy do very often. Just rip through, get to the free throw line corner, and pop a jump shot off the dribble. That's a skilled play right there by Raekwon. Rogers two for three, ready's up four. McDuffie drives baseline on Tony. Give him and one. Tony couldn't stay in front of McDuffie. And they'll charge Tony for the foul. That is his second. Team set, team's fifth, and McDuffie to the line for a three-point play. Both teams have now hit their last three field goal attempts. We've got a high-scoring affair early on here. Both teams tracking score over 40 points in the first half. McDuffie hits the free throw. It's a one-point game. Drake Wilkes in for the Reddies for the first time. Quan Marshall, Henderson State's senior point guard, walks it into the front court. Guarded by Craddock. And a legal screen on Raekwon Rogers, his second. That's something to watch. Now two on JT, two on Raekwon. Raekwon got effectively taken out of this game the last time these teams met in Monticello with two fouls in the first half, and then he picked up a third and a fourth in quick succession in the beginning of the second half. And now with JT and Raekwon both on the bench, you're going to see extended time here from Drake and Yuri. They're going to have to be up to the challenge because UAM is starting to heat up. Yeah, this game's been called tight too, David. On both sides, the refs, ha the refs have get been consistent, which is all you can ask for. But six team fouls now on the Reddies and five on the Weevil. So UAM shooting free throws next time they're fouled. McDuffie pulls up for a deuce and knocks it home. A long two for McDuffie. He's got five in a row for UAM. And the Monticello Bull Weevils take their first lead, 19 to 18. Away from the basketball. Foul whistled on UAM. Will go on Lemmy Howard. That'll be his second. So both UAM starting big man and the Reddy starting big man each have two fouls. Howard and and Warren for UAM with two. Tony and Rogers for HSU with two. So we're gonna see the backup front court players for each team now as Kyler Haynes checks in for the first time today. A lot of shot making going on in this game. Seven straight makes in the game. Reddies are three of their last three, UAM four of their last four. Marshall to inbound. Chenault pops off the screen, baseline J, that's cash. Eight shots in a row made between these two teams. Reddies up one and UAM throws it away. The first mistake by Arkansas Monticello, McDuffie, a miscommunication with his teammate. 
And the ball out of bounds back to HSU. That's a good sign to see Graham make his first jump shot. His confidence, it really seems to have grown here in the last few games. He had a good game on Monday night against Wachita, hit two threes. They could really use him getting going. Drake Wilkes over to Riddle. Riddle turns the corner. Down the lane, hangs in the air. Too strong, rebound pops out into the hands of Daniels for Arkansas Monticello. Henderson stayed up one. McDuffie, a rip through, down the lane. Left it short, rebound Riddle. Henderson State running away. Riddle into the front court. Under 10 minutes to play first half. Swinford thought about a three. An offensive foul as Swinford bowls over Haynes. That's the fifth turnover by the Reddies. Just one on Monticello. David, I mean, we look like geniuses looking back to our keys to victory. We talked about Henderson State struggles turning the ball over. And the Reddies advantage on the glass. Henderson State, 10 rebounds. Monticello has two. But alternatively, the Reddies have five turnovers to Monticello's one. So both teams doing what they do best and and, and struggling in the, in the categories where they uh, have some trouble. Definitely. It'll be interesting to see who can start dipping into that other category where they're struggling right now. I think that's the team that's going to find themselves with the lead here late in this game. Frey handles for UAM, drives baseline on Riddle, and drags the pivot foot. Great defense by Riddle. And Monticello turns it over on back-to-back -back possessions. Reddies with a one-point lead, 21-20, 9-41 to play in the first half. Henderson State led by six on a few occasions, led 6 nothing, and also led 15-9. This is UAM, UAM took a 20-19 lead, which was their first advantage of the ball game. Miholchich goes to Chenault. Chenault drives baseline on Daniels. Chenault stuck underneath, threw it away. Six, the Reddies turnover. UAM, three on three. Jones puts it behind the back, leaves it for Frey. Wide open three, yes. Can't leave Monticello open like that. You're asking for it. UAM, three for five from three. And the Reddies call a timeout with 9.06 to play in the first half. Yeah, to be honest with you, Cyrus, as well as Henderson has played at times here in the first 11 or so minutes, uh, the fact that you're shooting 62% and trailing is not a good sign. Um, you know, Henderson State, it's just hard. You can't play much better offensively, but those turnovers have hurt them. And if you're going to get into a shootout, you don't want to get into a shootout against Monticello. That's not the kind of game that favors Henderson in this particular matchup. I think Henderson, you know, would much prefer a grinded out type game against this opponent. If they get into a shootout against the Weevils, that's going to be a tough game to win. I mean, the Reddies simply just, they just have to get more shots at the rim. The Reddies, like you said, David, are 8 of 13. They have, they've, so they've missed five shots. They've got four offensive rebounds. So they've only gone without a, a make on one on one possession when they're not turning the ball over. They, but six turnovers, they, 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 it's, it's been a story all year. The Reddies just have to do a better job of hanging on to the ball if they, get, if they want to reach their ceiling this season. And they, and they haven't done so, uh, you know, so far tonight. Already on pace again for, you know, six turnovers in the first 11 minutes, on pace for 20 turnovers in the game. We've resumed play here in the Duke Well Center. Now under nine to play in the first half. The Reddies trail by two. Drake Wilkes backing down, up and under, off the window. And great move, just blew the layup. UAM reclaims it, up two. 8.45 to play in the first half, and those are shots that the Reddies just can't afford to miss against this Monticello basketball team. Blake Lee Cobb, seeing his first action, throws it far side to Jones. Now Kyler Haynes gets around Tomislav Miholcic, and Miholcic just doesn't have the foot speed to hang with Haynes, and Haynes will go to the line to shoot a one and one. The foul was on the floor, but that's the eighth team foul on the Reddies. With 8.32 to play in the first half as fouls really starting to pile up on HSU. Haynes to the line, shooting a one and one. Fouls are starting to pile up, but Henderson's gonna roll the dice here. They're gonna put Jeremiah Tony back in this game, eight and a half minutes till halftime. He's already got two fouls. I mean, if he picks up another one, he's definitely done for the rest of this half. He's gonna have to be really careful. And for a player like Jeremiah, who attacks the glass so hard and goes to the basket so hard, you gotta be really doubly careful because he puts himself in a lot of different situations where it's very possible to get an offensive foul. So he's gonna have to play really smart here on the next few minutes on the court. Haynes. Hits the first, earns, earns himself a second free throw. Got them both. UAM, excellent free throw shooting team, which is no surprise considering they're 
arguably the best three-point shooting team in the country. Monticello leads the GAC in three-point shooting percentage, 75.6% as a team. UAM up by four, 25-21, and a loose ball foul will be charged to Dewan Jones. He poked it away from Marshall and dove on the floor to steal it, but he took out Marshall's legs, and now Quan will go to the line to shoot a one-and-one. One. Unlucky for Dewan Jones, who was just trying to make a hustle play for the Weevils. I know they're shooting a really good percentage right now, 57%, but I think the turnovers are a testament to this. Henderson does not look very comfortable in the half court right now. Monticello's defense is extended really far. They're jumping passing lanes. They're all up in the Reddy's ball handlers as soon as they cross half court. And Henderson State, Quan Marshall really gets a little bit lucky there, loses the ball. That could have easily been a turnover. And Jones just took his legs out from under him going for the loose ball. He's going to get free throws, but I think Henderson State's got to, got to move a little bit better without the basketball. Guys have to get open because the ball handler right now is getting hounded as soon as he crosses the half-court line. You're right, David. Your Arkansas Monticello is really applying their defense and pressure to all four corners of the front court. Quan Marshall to the line, shooting a one-and-one. One. In and out. Rebound UAM. Arkansas Monticello with the basketball. They've hit five of the last six shots. Back door intercepted by Swinford. Reddy's get it back. UAM's third turnover. Marshall back to Swinford. Far baseline, back and down on Haynes. Finds Tony who cuts to the basket. Tony lays it up and in. Good feed by Swinford. And Jeremiah Tony is four for four. Really good minutes here in the first half off the bench from Yuri Swinford. Made a couple shots, kept some plays alive with rebounds. Got a steal there and then an assist. He, he's been excellent off the bench today. Swinford, a sneaky good passer, had four assists for the Reddy's. The other night, Haynes puts up the three for UAM. Too strong off the back heel. And it caroms out of bounds. It'll be returned to the Reddies when we come back. 7.32 to play in the first half. Reddies down 2, 25-23. You're listening to Reddies Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenir. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Welcome back to Arkadelphia, Henderson State. Trails the visiting Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils by 225 to 23. Reddy's led by as many as six. The Reddy's have the basketball. Jeremiah Tony Quan Marshall, Xavier Davenport, Yuri Swinford, and Damian Deer on the floor for HSU. 7.30 left in the first half. Reddy's looking to tie or take the lead on this offensive possession. Marshall hounded by Jones. Backs it out to the timeline. Reddy's having trouble getting into their offensive set. Marshall all the way to the basket. Takes it himself. Couldn't find a teammate. So we did all the work with a little solo act and the Reddy's tied up at 25. Marshall on the board with his first field goal. 25 all, under seven minutes to play in the first half. Jones shovels it to McDuffie. McDuffie on the baseline, out to Haynes. Eight to shoot, Jones gets it back. Top of the key shaded left, Jones pulls the NBA three. Won't go, rebound McDuffie. He beat Tony to the basket and lays it back up and in for a second chance point. 27-25, Monticello leads. Six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Marshall gets around a Haynes hedge through the hands of Swinford, but he tracks it down. Swinford to the basket. 
Arcing pass left wing to Deer, who drives inside and floats it up and in from the left block. Deer's got his first two, and we're tied at 27. Back and forth action here in the Duke Well Center. Monticello basketball, 6.06 to play. Jones drives baseline far side. Bounce pass Haynes. Tried to kick it out, intercepted by Marshall. Marshall runs the break for the Reddies. Marshall one on four inside, wild shot. Ill-advised by Marshall. UAM gets it back, two on three. McDuffie had it stolen. Tony back for the Reddies, three on one. Marshall to Tony. Tony lays it up, was fouled. And he will shoot two after a frenetic end-to-end -end sequence. Reddies will go to the line to retake the lead. 5.44 to play in the first half. Tony's going to shoot two free throws. And Tony was a very frequent visitor to the free throw line on Monday night. Tony went 7 of 12 against Watchdog Baptist. Those 12 free throw attempts were the most attempted by any ready this season. Tony just 57% on the year from the line and his first freebie just barely grazes the front rim and falls very short. But he will get another free throw as Tomislav Miholcic as well as Josh Mason checks in. Mason seeing his first action. Marshall and Swinford going to the bench. Tony got the second. Reddy's retake the lead 28-27 as Tony will take a seat for the Reddies. Tony a very, very solid first half. Nine points, four for five from the field. Two rebounds, both of them offensive and no turnovers and that's noted because Tony has struggled in the turnover category from time to time this year. UAM on offense. Howard playing with two fouls. Hands off to Daniels. Daniels circles the arc, puts up the three, and puts it in. Too easy for Daniels. Anderson State. Defensive confusion. And Daniels gives the Bull Weevils a two-point lead, 30-28. to 28. Deer picks up his dribble. Bounce past me. Holchic. Right elbow. Over to Mason. Mason drives baseline. Little push shot in the air. Offensive foul. As Mason got... Caught in the air, was in between a pass and a shot. Lemmy Howard drew the charge. And that's a big call because that would have been Howard's third personal foul. But they say Howard beat him to the spot. And the Reddies commit their seventh turnover of the first half. Coaches didn't like that one by Mason. They immediately put him on the bench. And I think it was a good take, but we talked about it on a Monday against Washington with the girls. Anytime you leave your feet like that and there's a defender under you, these officials in this league are going to get you every single time. And if you're Mason, obviously freshman, uh, still learning the game, still learning the speed of college basketball, I think the coaches would be more than fine with getting your man in the air after the pump fake and just pulling up for a 12-foot jumper. Nothing wrong with that, but Mason commits the offensive foul and will find the bench. Henderson State looking to find a stop. Arkansas Monticello has had the offense working in the last few minutes. Five on the shot clock. Craddock at the left block. Craddock. Hangs and can't hit it, but was fouled underneath by Tomislav Miholcic. Craddock will go to the line to shoot a pair of free throws where Monticello is perfect as a team, six for six. And I mentioned earlier, UAM first in the GAC as a team from the charity stripe, 75.6%. That's also top 25 in the nation, but... Good job, Cyrus. I got him. I got him. Announcers drinks working in the Reddy's favor as Craddock misses the first of two. Craddock not a very frequent visitor to the free throw line, but he just plays 8.4 minutes per game, four for five from the stripe coming into this one. And missed them both. Reddy's rebound as Swinford tips it into the hands of Malik Riddle. Reddy's down two. UAM 30 HSU 28. Knocked away. Davenport on the deck to reclaim it for the Reddies. A nice hustle play for the X-Man. Henderson State keeps it on offense. Not a great looking possession so far. Swinford saves it. Swinford carried it, and that was uh, that was ugly from the start. Henderson State almost turned it over twice. And finally, Swinford gives it away. That's the eighth turnover by the Reddies. And 
you know, some tur sometimes turnovers are unforced, but you got to give credit where credit is due. Arkansas Monticello's defense is really hounding the Ruddies at this point, and they've uh, they've made the Ruddies' life very difficult. Which is to say, the Ruddies are still shooting 61% from the field, but Henderson State obviously struggling in the turnover battle. Eight giveaways. Daniels. Spins and gives to McDuffie, top of the key. McDuffie now Frey. McFray jabs right back to McDuffie. McDuffie, fancy dribbling, pulls up, left elbow. Too strong. Rebound found by McDuffie. And a foul on the floor will be charged to Xavier Davenport. That is a tough call, and it's late. I didn't see much there. That's Davenport second. UAM will head to the free throw line in the double bonus when we come back. Henderson State down two. You're listening to Ready's Basketball on the HSU Sports Network. SEM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for nearly 20 years. You will recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the new dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. This year, SEM Architects have been privileged to work on the restoration of the Caddo Center cafeteria that will house an exhibit of Native American artifacts from the Joint Educational Consortium Hodges Collection. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial, interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at SCMarchitects.com. Sodexo would like to invite you to a new dining experience on the beautiful campus of Henderson State University. Come dine with us in our new dining hall or retail locations including Starbucks. Perfect for your break times. Grab a quick lunch at Chick-fil-A where it's always a pleasure to serve you. And check out the all-new Ready Grill. Fresh ingredients made to order and certain to put you in that ready spirit. Sodexo, encouraging you to eat well, live ready. Welcome back to Arkadelphia. Henderson State trails by two. As we return from our fourth and final media timeout of the first half, Arkansas Monticello out of the break, heading to the free throw line. 11 team fouls on the Reddies in the first half, so foul trouble will most likely be a story in the latter portion of this of this basketball game. Davenport, Rogers, Tony, and Miholchich all playing with two fouls now for the Reddies. Dewan Jones, Max Warren, and Lemmy Howard have two for the Bull Weevils. Denzel McDuffie hits the first of two free throws. McDuffie continues to torture the Reddies. Eight points with another free throw coming. He's got three rebounds in the first half. Got it. Bo got them both. McDuffie has scored a season high 19 points twice. They've both come against the Reddies. Monticello up four. This is their largest lead. They also led 25-21. Backdoor fine intercepted by Daniels. UAM basketball, three on three. And the Reddies pick it off as Swinford intercepts Daniels' backdoor pass to McDuffie. Davenport puts it on the deck. Drives inside, jump stop, a lot of contact, no foul. UAM basketball after the rebound. Kyler Haynes, jump stop, gives to McDuffie. Now Daniels puts up a long two and a foul on the jump shooter, Yuri Swinford. Daniels hits the shot and will go to the line for a three-point play. Twelfth foul called on the Reddies in the half. And that's the second foul charged on the Reddies after a jump shot. Don't want to see give Miles Daniels any more opportunities than he already has to see the ball go through the basket. Again, Daniels with five points, looking to make it six with a free throw. He does. And Arkansas Monticello all of a sudden has their largest lead up seven, 35-28. After a quick ready start, it's been more UAM domination as we wind down this first half under three to play. Riddle. Spinning at the free throw line around Kendall Frey. He got blocked. And Frey couldn't keep it in bounds. Henderson State trying to do too much individually right now. As Monticello's on an 8 0 run over the last two minutes and 38 seconds. Malik Riddle to the bench. Quiet first half for Riddle. Two points, one for three from the floor. As 
seemed, it seemed as though the Reddies were set to inbound the basketball, but now the referees want to go to the monitor and check on things. David, I'm not sure if you if you saw anything that would lead us to believe that this call is going to be changed. I'm not sure. I thought they could only review plays under the two minute mark. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what they're looking at. There's. Uh... We're, we're checking the shot clock, David. So one of the referees was kind enough to walk over here and give us an update. It's always a welcome occurrence. Set the shot clock to 13. Shot clock, shot clock above one of the scoreboards, one of the backboards, excuse me, not working. So we have the shot clock in the far left corner as the Reddies struggle to inbound the basketball. And Quan Marshall calls a timeout before the Reddies turn it over. And David, this, this Monticello defense. I, it's, it's hard to distinguish what Monticello has done a better job of tonight, offense or defense, because it's there's just nowhere for the Reddies to go on you know, multiple, multiple possessions uh, in, in the latter half of the opening period. It looks like they've really got the Reddies half-court offense figured out. They're extending everything. They're, they're not at all scared of a backdoor cut right now. They actually, Henderson tried it one time, and they still got a hand on the ball for a steal. They've extended their defense on the ball handlers way out to almost half court. The Reddies just don't look comfortable at all in the half court. Uh, they got to get something going, got to get some movement, swing the ball from side to side. A lot of dribbling right now, and I think that plays right into what UAM's doing defensively. Got to try to end the first half on a run here. You were in a good spot, and now the exact same thing that happened in Monticello has happened here. Henderson was in the lead, and then Monticello goes on a run right before the end of the first half. Reddy's restart it. Raekwon Rogers into the paint with a drive. Now kicks to Deer, and he stepped on the end line. Another Henderson State turnover. They're 10th. The, think... Reddy's, the Reddy's led this game 15 to 9. Since then, Arkansas Monticello has outscored Henderson State 26 to 13. Thomas Lav Miholchic back in the game. Raekwon Rogers will take a seat. Little offense for defense substitution. Miholchic, though, tough matchup to guard Kyler Haynes. He's got maybe the foot speed on Miholchic. I was about to say, on that last turnover, I think that's a shot by Raekwon. You're right at the basket. Frey drives baseline underneath, goes to Haynes. Haynes with the catch and the score from the top of the, top of the restricted circle. UAM getting anything they want now as we wind down the first half. It's a nine-point Bull Weevils lead, 37-28. Swinford to the basket, bumped by McDuffie. Outlets to Marshall. Left side, handling on the left wing now. Gets a right side screen, Miholchich, top of the key. Marshall at the left block, little push shot up and in. Give him the foul, and he'll go to the line for a three-point play. Marshall zigging and zagging on that, on that offensive possession, and he'll go to the line to add the freebie. Man, Henderson needed that in a bad, bad way. That was an 11-0 run by Monticello to take that nine point lead and Henderson hadn't scored in almost four minutes. So that was a big take by Quan. You gotta hope that that's the start of a little run here to end the first half to get this thing back to even before the break. Marshall gets the free throw. Reddy's down six, 37-31. Arkansas Monticello dealing with a little Reddy's full court press. They break it, Daniels for three. Won't go, weak side rebound, Miholchich. Reddy's get it back. Marshall speeds into the front court. Puts up the three. Puts it in. Quan Marshall. Instant offense. He's got eight. And the Reddy's on a quick 6-0 run, all from the hand of Quan Marshall. It's a three-point game, 37-34. 1.35 to play in the first half. Ray shovels it to Haynes. He tries to answer with a three of his own and does. The Reddy's just not closing out on UAM shooters. Haynes hits a three. Arkansas Monticello, five for 10 from the perimeter. Back to a six point UAM lead. Marshall pivots, gives to Tony. Tony thought about a three, he'll put it up. Left it short, offensive rebound, Davenport. Chenault now with the three. He drills it, Graham Chenault has been on fire in the last couple games and he stayed hot today. Two for two from the field, he's got five. And it's back to a three point game, UAM with Kendall Frey weaving inside, fouled by Miholchich. 
and Frey shooting two. 13th team foul on the Reddies in the first half as Monticello was deep in the double bonus. That'll be the third on Tomislav Maholcic. Big Tom's just having a tough time keeping up with these athletic and fast big guys, or the guys that may not be big, but UAM's playing them at that spot right now in the first half. Three fouls in the first half. Big Tom just doesn't quite have the foot speed to keep up with those guys. He's about a half step behind. Bray gets the first. David, how about Graham Chenault? We, we've been waiting for Graham to break out all season long. We know he can be a sharpshooter. Last two plus games now, last two games and then this game combined, six for his last seven. Four for five from three. So, Chenault providing the Reddies with some much needed outside shooting. Well, he started two games to begin the year for Henderson State, and you gotta think that happened for a reason. He got off to a slow start, but he's really picked it up and they've needed it. Frey misses the second free throw. Reddies rebound. HSU on offense. Chenault, another three, but puts it on the deck, got away with a travel maybe. He was Halfway to putting it up again as Quan Marshall drives inside and he is fouled on the floor by Craddock. Craddock will send Quan Marshall back to the line. The Reddy's in the double bonus now. So Marshall will shoot two. And Marshall has had a great half of half of basketball. He rolls home the first. Marshall. His scoring has been a welcome sight for the Reddies. He averaged 13 a game in the Reddies' first three contests of the year, but after he returned from an upper upper body injury, he averaged just four per game. So if Marshall hits this free throw, this will be the first time he's in double figures in about a month. He got it. The Reddies down by just two with 30 seconds left. In the first half, Monticello walks it into the front court and calls a timeout about a four Four and a half second difference between shot clock and game clock, and this has been a great ready spurt to get some momentum back as we head to halftime. Well, it's just like I said when Quan got that and one to go, you were just praying that that was the start of a little baby spurt before the half, because without that, you're really not feeling good if you're Henderson, and all of a sudden, I mean, you got to get a stop right here, but if you can get a stop here, only down two, you're really very much still in this game, and a lot of momentum's on your side the way that you've ended the half here, so a nice little flourish at the end, mainly from the hand of Quan Marshall, who's really stepped up here in the last couple minutes. He's got eight just in the last two minutes. That three from Graham was huge too, and let's give X a little bit of credit. He kept that play alive, got a long offensive rebound, and immediately kicked to a wide open Graham. So it's been a good effort here by Henderson in the last couple minutes, and they've also, to be quite frank, they've gambled a little bit defensively. They left Daniels open in the corner for a wide open three, and he missed it. And you got to get some of those breaks sometimes to get back in a game, and they got a couple here in the last couple minutes. It'll be Monticello basketball. Again, about a four-and-a-half difference, shot clock and game clock, as we wind down the first half. Reddy's trail by two, 41 to 39. Reddy's led by as many as six in the first half, and they trailed by as many as nine. Monticello led 37 to 28 just two minutes ago. It's a two-point game now as Dewan Jones... UAM's junior point guard dribbles near the timeline, now works in front of the Reddy's bench, gets a double screen. Now on the perimeter, on the right wing, finds Daniels. He had it ripped away from Davenport. Davenport, other way, five seconds left. Davenport hammered, and he will shoot two as Davenport attacked the rack. The Reddies can tie this ball game with two Davenport, Davenport free throws. Can't ask for more than that on that defensive possession if you're Henderson State. A great play by X to get in there and pickpocket that pass, and he got hacked hard on the other end. Good job by him of going up strong. Two free throws here can tie this thing with five seconds to go till halftime. Really can't ask for more if you're Henderson State. Davenport, two points so far today, looking to double that total. Hits the first. And David, I might think about taking Raekwon Rogers out of this ball game with five seconds left. And Jeremiah Tony, you do not want either of those guys to pick up a cheapy foul with five seconds left, but I don't see anybody going to the scorer's table. Rogers and Tony both playing with two personal fouls, and now Jeremiah Tony getting a little word from the referees, maybe a little chippiness underneath with Denzel McDuffie. And David, now Swinford and Miholcic heading to the scorer's table. Davenport hits the free throw, and... Jimmy Elgus read by mine. Rogers and Tony will check out. And that's actually a big free throw by X because if he misses right. that, they don't have a chance to get in. 
they didn't get him in before that first free throw. So without that make, Raekwon and JT could have both been out on the court right there. That's a good job by you and a good job by the coaching staff to see that. Five seconds left, tie ball game. First half, 41-41. Hines, back to Jones. Jones, the runner from 30 feet, got it! DeJuan Jones hits his third three at the end of the first half as time expires. You just you, you just shake your head and and shrug. What can you do? Dewan Jones is shooting 36% from the floor this season. He's four for five tonight. And Monticello ends the first half six for 11 from three, showing off why they're the best three-point shooting team in all of Division II basketball. Yeah, I mean, you just got to tip your cap. It's pretty good defense. Uh, if a guy's going to make a three-pointer from the volleyball line as time expires in the first half, there's really not a lot you can do about that if you're Henderson State. I think you nailed it, Cyrus. Just illustrates that this team is tough, and even when you think you might have them on the ropes for a minute or two, it, they come back with something like that to steal some momentum away from you going into the break. And Henderson State still has put themselves in a good spot. That was a nice run to close the half, but you just almost have to laugh and say, man, you just can't ever quite do enough against this team if you're Henderson State. I mean, just look. I mean, you, what a what a what a great just phrase. What a, it never seems like it's enough. I mean, just look at these halftime stats for the Reds. The Reds are shooting 58 percent from the field, 14 to 24, three for four, 75 percent. Haven't put up a lot of threes, but an, an astronomical shooting percentage and 10 for 11, 91 percent from the line. From the line, nevertheless. Uh, they're out rebounding Monticello 16 boards to seven. So Henderson State has has done almost everything you can possibly ask for tonight, and yet they still trail Monticello 44 to 41 as we head to intermission. We'll take a quick break and be back with the Holiday Inn Express halftime show. You're listening to Reddy's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. We've been hearing a lot of concerns about Domino's new bread twist. Apparently, you've been ordering them as a decoy to keep others away from your precious pizza. But watching the bread twist go so fast because everyone else wanted them made you want them too. But while we feel you, we'd like to acknowledge that this is probably the best tasting problem you've ever had. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm dunkable bread twists and flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon. Like deciding whether to wait for a parking spot or just walk further. Choosing between telling dad jokes or wearing mom jeans, or picking your favorite child. So when it comes to giving you more choices between ridiculously delicious menu options, all we can say is, we're sorry. You're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twist or medium two topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. What if I said you could help start a small business, make a family's dream of home ownership a reality, or even help a young child learn the importance of saving? Well, if you're banking with Southern Bank Corp, you're already doing this and more. Southern Bank Corp is a community development bank unlike any other in the state. We were founded on the belief that wealth building is for everyone. That's why we offer a wide variety of financial tools to help people along their path to economic opportunity, no matter their starting point. And when you open a checking or savings account with us, explore small business lending, or get a home loan through Southern Bank Corp, you're being a wealth builder too. By banking with Southern Bank Corp, you are supporting your own financial journey and also families in your community dreaming of a brighter future. That's what it means to be wealth builders for everyone. And we hope you'll join us in ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to build a brighter future. Stop by any of our locations or visit us on the web at banksouthern.com to learn more. Southern Bank Corp, wealth builders for everyone. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Right. Welcome back to Arkadelphia Henderson State. Trails by three at the halftime break. The Reddies hosting the Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils tonight. And the Bull Weevils, their reputation, they're, they're showing off uh, their reputation of being one of the best three point shooting teams in the country. Arkansas Monticello, six for 11 from three point range in the first half. And they ended the first period with a three-pointer from about 30 feet, a leaner from Dewan Jones, his third three-pointer of the first half, he, give him 11, and it was a game of runs at the end of the first half there. Henderson State led 25-21, a 16-3 UAM run, 
made it 37-28. It looked like at the end of the first half he was about to get away from the Reddies as they trailed by nine, but Henderson State finishes the bre finishes the period on a 13-7 run, and it's that Jones three-pointer that's the difference in this ball game so far. And as David and I were talking, my broadcast partner David Sally, we were talking at the uh, at the quick break and. Like we said, David, not much more the Reddies can do in the first half. They've shot the ball extremely well, but UAM uh, just uh, just has had the Reddies number, and 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 they they've been they've been tough tonight. If there's one thing you got to try to clean up a little bit for Henderson, it's obviously the turnovers. You've got ten, UAM's got six, and UAM's winning the points off turnovers battle, thirteen to three. So that right there is the biggest stat. But otherwise, I mean, you talked about it right before we went to break. 58% from the field for Henderson, 75% from three, 10 of 11 at the line, 16 to seven advantage in rebounds. I mean, Henderson State, offensively, there's really not a lot more you can do. You've played really, really well offensively. It's We knew it was gonna be hard to shut down UAM on the defensive end of the floor, and that has proved true here again today. Um, but you gotta find a way to do it in the second half because as well as you played in this first half, I think it's much more likely UAM keeps up their offensive production in the second half than U Henderson does, unfortunately. Right. It just the stats would tell you that that's the team UAM has been all season. Henderson played fantastic in the first half, but I said it earlier and I'll say it again. If you're in a shootout with UAM, that's a really, really difficult game to win. I think you've got to go on some sort of big spur if you're Henderson State here in the second half. Hold them scoreless for two, three, four minutes and get yourself up by eight or ten. But if you keep trading baskets, trading baskets, if you let them shoot 56% in the second half again, it's going to be hard for Henderson to win this game because let's face it, you just shot 58 and you're down at halftime. That's tough. Halftime statistics presented by Southwest Auto Collection. Southwest Auto offers the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC located at 10th Street in Arkadelphia or online at iDriveSWA.com. The Reddies and the Bull Weevils shoot the lights out in the first half. UAM, 14 of 25 overall, 56%, 6 of 11 from 3, 55%, 10 of 13 from the line, 76.9%. The Reddies, even better. Henderson State, 14 of 24, 3 of 4 from 3, and 10 of 11 from the free throw line. Individual leaders, Arkansas Monticello, led by Dewan Jones, who he basically turns, he's, he's a bull, David. When he sees red, he, he, he goes crazy. He, he's seen the Reddies for the, this is the third time this year he's seen Henderson State, and this is, the, he just loves playing against the Reddies. Dewan Jones shooting 50% against the Reddies uh, in two games, shooting 36% overall in the season. He scored 20 He's averaging 20 points per game against Henderson State in two games, and, and he's headed to the 20-point marker again tonight with 11 in the first half. Four for five from the field goal uh, from the from the field, three for four from three, two assists and no turnovers. He has dominated in these matchups. Other scores for UAM, Denzel McDuffie, as usual, torturing the Reddies. McDuffie in his last five games against HSU, averaging 15 points and 12 rebounds. He's got nine points and three rebounds tonight, three of six from the floor, three of three from the line and one assist. Miles Daniels has six, two for five from the floor, one of two from three, one of one from the foul line. Lemmy Howard has five, one for one from the field, three for three from the line. Kendall Frey, four points, one for two from the field, both takes and the one make from three. Max Warren has two in six, just six minutes, was in foul trouble, one for two from the floor and off the bench. Kyler Haynes has been excellent, seven points, two of three from the field, one of two from three, and two of two from the free throw line. Keon Craddock, Alvarez Powell, and Blakely Cobb did not score off the bench for UAM. For Henderson State, it's been Quan Marshall. He's in double figures in the first half. Three for four from the field, one for one from three, three for three from the line for Marshall, who's got an assist and a steal. Marshall into double figures in the first half. First time he's in, into double figures since January 14th at Harding. Henderson State got nine. From the, in the first half from Jeremiah Tony, four for six from the field, 0 for one from three, one for two from the line, three rebounds for Tony. Five points off the bench from Yuri Swinford, one for one. The take and the make was from three, two for two from the line, two rebounds, both of them offensive for Swinford. Also five off the bench for Graham Chenault. Chenault, two for two from the field, one for one from three. Four apiece from Raekwon Rogers and Xavier Davenport. Rogers with four. Davenport with four. Rogers two for three from the floor. Davenport 0 for one.
Both Rodgers and Davenport have a pair of rebounds. Malik Riddle and Damian Deer also have two for the Reddies. Drake Wilkes, Tomislav Miholcic, and Josh Mason did not score in the first half for HSU. Other stats, Reddies 16 rebounds to Monticello's seven, so the Reddies plus nine in the battle of the boards. Henderson State and Monticello, each with five assists. Monticello, though, six turnovers. Henderson State with 10. UAM, 13 points off of 10 Reddy's turnovers. Henderson State just with three points off six Bull Weevil turnovers. HSU, 10 points in the paint to UAM's eight. Seven second chance points for Monticello. Five second chance points for the Reddy's. Six fast break points for HSU. No fast break points for UAM. UAM, 16 bench points. HSU has 12 points from their bench in the first half. We'll take another break and jump around the GAC when we come back with a scoreboard update. You're listening to the Holiday Inn Express Halftime Show on the Henderson State Sports Network. KDEL 100.9 FM and KVRC 1340 AM, Arkadelphia. KZYP 1310 AM and K281CK 104.1 Malvern. KYXK 106.9 FM, Gurdon. Close your eyes. Unless you're driving, then that's dangerous. But everyone else, close your eyes. Picture this. It's a Monday afternoon. You're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the smiling Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course, of your hard-earned cheddar. You feel invigorated and alive. Now, picture this. It's a Friday. We're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the same Domino's employee more cash than you did on Monday? But that doesn't make any sense. But then, a radio commercial comes from on high and says, Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. You fist pump into the air, punching the roof of your car. You are alive again. But your fist hurts. But you're still thinking about Domino's. Carry out only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles. Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who will give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia, or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Welcome back to Arkadelphia. You're listening to the Holiday Inn Express Halftime Show. If you're taking a trip to Arkadelphia, plan your stay at the Holiday Inn Express of Caddo Valley, located conveniently off of I-30. The Holiday Inn Express of Caddo Valley is perfect for your next family trip. Give us a call at 870-403-0880. David, got some big upsets in the GAC so far tonight, which is a good sign for the Reddies who are looking to upset Arkansas Monticello. First on the women's side, Oklahoma Baptist gets a big win over East Central. Oklahoma Baptist 1-11 coming into tonight, and East Central 8-4. But OKBU wins 80-70 in Shawnee. An even bigger shocker, perhaps, Southern Nazarene. 5-5 five five beats Southwest Oklahoma State 73-63. And Northwestern Oklahoma State, who was 2-9 entering Thursday, beats Southeastern Oklahoma State, who was 8-5, 73-65 in overtime had some late schedule changes Arkansas Tech will visit Watchdog Baptist Southern Arkansas will visit Harding but those both those games moved to Friday so a little bit lighter on the uh, on the scoreboard updates so far um, for uh, for this evening in switching over to men's action East Central goes on the road and beats Oklahoma Baptist another upset OKBU OK, was 9 and 2 leading the GAC West East Central wins 78 to 70 in other action, 
It's a tight one down the stretch in Alva, Southeastern Oklahoma State 58, Northwestern Oklahoma State 57 with, with eight minutes to play up there. And midway through the first half in Bethany, Southwestern Oklahoma State leads Southern Nazarene 20 to 19 as they return from the under 12 media timeout. David, uh, it's hard to ask the Reddies to play much better offensively I think if there's, obviously, if there's room to improve for the Reddies in the second half, it's it's on the defensive side as Monticello shot 56% and uh, overall and over 50% from, from three-point range in the first half. Got to find a way to slow them down. Uh, you know, if you're Henderson State, got to keep doing what you're doing offensively. But, you know, uh, Monticello is such a talented offensive team that, you know, I you're not going to beat them without – doing something special defensively in the second half, I think you got to force them to miss some more shots than they did in that first one. I, there's just no way that you can win this game if they shoot that same percentage in the second half. you got to keep your foot on the gas offensively and lock in tight defensively. It's it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting here in the next 10 minutes to see if one team can gap the other one a little bit. If you're the readies, you got to make sure you're the team that starts the second half on that run as opposed to Monticello. If you remember, Cyrus, back in, in Monticello the last time these two teams met, you know, Monticello ended the half on the big run and then began the second half on that big run. It was a 30-7 to run in total. And then today, it's sort of been the opposite. Henderson had the big run to end the first half. Hopefully, they can do the same thing that UAM did to them the last time these two teams met and go on a big run here to start the second. Yeah, the Reddies were down by three early in the second half down in Monticello on, uh, a couple weeks ago, 42-39. Then UAM ripped off an 18-1 to run. It was 42 to 39. That became 50, 59 to 40, and that was that was pretty much all she wrote for the Reddies in that one. So Henderson State trying to flip the script as they will start the second half on defense. UAM will move right to left as we start the second period. Far side behind the right wing, Jones. Arcs around the circle and one hands to Daniels. Daniels on the GAC logo at the left wing. Now Frey jabs right, uses a Warren screen to move to the left elbow. Throws it inside to Warren who gets around Riddle and scores with the right hand. Great offense to start the second half by UAM. They lead by five, 46-41, 30 seconds in to the second half. Reddy's working on offense. Tony hands off to Marshall, far side. Uses the offhand to get some room. Pump fakes on Dewan Jones, left layup short, rebound Warren, who had it stolen away from Marshall. He's fouled by Warren, and the Reddies will steal a pair of free throws as Quan Marshall has continued a very solid game on both, sens both ends of the court. Marshall, 10 points in the first half, eight of them in a two-minute span, and Marshall in the first half alone, back into double figures for the first time since January 14th when he scored 14. And the Reddies' loss at Harding. Marshall rattles home the first of two free throws. Marshall 4 of 4 from the line tonight. He's got 11. He's the only player, Reddy or Weevil, to score in double figures so far, although... Jeremiah Tony for the Reddies does have nine as Marshall gets them both. Miles Daniels and Denzel McDuffie also sitting on nine for UAM. Jones not far behind with eight. Monticello back on offense, up three. Daniels, one bounce at the left block. He's doubled and throws it out to Howard. Now McDuffie puts it on the deck. McDuffie drives to the basket and lays it in with the left hand. Strong move by McDuffie. He's into double figures. He's got 11. UAM's lead back to five. Arkansas minus Monticello starting the second half with two layups. Jeremiah Tony spins at the free throw line. Has to get out of the lane. Does. Goes to Rogers. 14 feet. Rogers on the baseline. He's fouled by Howard. That's on the floor. That'll be Howard's third personal foul. Second team foul on Arkansas Monticello here. At 18.38 to go in the second half, and Howard will take a seat. Howard has been quiet. He's hit his only shot. He's also hit three free throws as he was fouled on a three-pointer 
in the first half. Davenport curls off the screen. Baseline J unavailable. He works it out close to the timeline to Riddle. Now Marshall directing traffic. Has it with the left. Points with the right. Nine to shoot. Tony, left elbow. Jumper left it short. Way short, in fact. Air ball out of bounds. Back to UAM it will go. With 18-23 left in our ball game, Arkansas Monticello up five with the ball. UAM's largest lead was nine at the 232 mark of the first half. They led 37-28. Ready's little full court pressure. Frey doubled by Tony and Riddle, but he gets it to McDuffie. McDuffie asks for a clear out. It's poked away by Tony. Tony with the steal for Henderson State. Tony up and under, missed it. Offensive rebound, Marshall. He puts it up and in. Henderson State back on defense. UAM running with it. Jones, bounce pass. Daniels, catch and shoot, left baseline, no. The three, too strong. Ready's weak side rebound. Henderson State down three, 48-45. Two minutes in here in the second half. Marshall has it on, on the string, loses it. Picked up by Rogers. Rogers up and under, throws it to Tony. Tony pumps. Tony back to Rogers. Rogers thought about a long two. Now Marshall steps up into an unguarded three and left it short. Offensive rebound, Riddle, he flew in for the big man board. Reddy's get another crack at it. Henderson State dominating the rebounding totals. Reddy's now 19 boards to Monticello's nine. Shot clock back down to five. Riddle, gotta put it up, Riddle. Shot clock at two, fade away three. Won't go, Rogers the rebound. Another opportunity for the Reddies. Rogers, baseline drive, and scores with the left. He gives the double bicep flex, and the Reddies are down by one. And that's so big for momentum if you're Henderson State because you dominated that possession and then cashed in when you got other chances. Three minutes into the second half, Frey had it knocked away. Jeremiah Tony going to be called for the loose ball foul. Unfortunate for Tony, who tried to hustle to the floor. But he picked up the foul, his third, and that's a tough one for the Reddies. Tony has been excellent in 14 minutes of action for HSU. Really been a spark plug, and that's kind of what I was talking about when he came back in or in the first half. He just has so much energy and so much hustle that he sometimes can pick up fouls like the one we just saw, unfortunately. Monticello basketball. Ball weevils up one, 48-47. Jones handles. Chests it to Frey, gets it back. Jones gets a right side screen at the top of the key from Haynes. Jones. Back to Haynes, top of the key, lets it fly and drains it. Kyler Haynes has 10. He's three for four from the field. Haynes into double figures. He's averaging just three points a game this season. Marshall working on the perimeter, drives inside. He was held by Jones. That'll be Jones' third foul. And it stops the clock with 16.23 to play in the second half. Ready to trail by four, 51-47. Jones will take a seat as Keon Craddock checks back into the ball game. David, there is not a man on this Monticello roster who can't shoot the ball. No, there's really not. Although, I'll take my chances with Craddock over Jones the way he's played this season against Henderson State. It's no, a big foul to get him on the bench. No doubt about it. Marshall puts his head down, spins into the lane, takes contact, won't go. Swinford offensive rebound. Swinford back up, and he was fouled. He'll shoot two. Monticello argu arguing that there should have been a jump ball called. Well, I think there should have been a foul on Quan Marshall before that, so let's just call it even. Yep. Swinford to the line, shooting two. They charge it to Kendall Frey, his second, already the team's fourth. And we haven't even had four minutes played. In the second half, Swinford again to the line, shooting two. Rattles home the first. Swinford had five points in the blink of an eye in the first half. Had two free throws at 14-14, then hit a three with 13-30 left to give him five. Misses the second, but Swinford with six points. Ready still trail by threes, equals their halftime deficit. 51-48, Daniels. Gives to McDuffie at the right block. McDuffie spins. Gives to Craddock. Extra pass, Haynes. Haynes back to Craddock, and that's the third personal on Raekwon Rogers. That's a that's the right call. Rogers put both hands on Haynes, and, and that's going to welcome an instantaneous whistle. Rogers second, team second. It takes us to our first media timeout of the second half. 
Reddy's down three, 51-48. You're listening to Reddy's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Brookshire's is proud to be a supporter of Reddy's Basketball. Stop by your friendly local grocery for quality, convenience, and service. Score points of your own with Brookshire's Your Points, saving you on groceries and fuel. Looking to change up the game? Shop Brookshire's online ordering and pickup. Get free pickup and pick up your groceries in as little as two hours. Score big and be the MVP this season as we cheer on the HSU Reddies. Apparently, you've been ordering Domino's new bread twists as a decoy to keep others away from your pizza. Only you suddenly wanted more bread twists for yourself. There are worse things than choosing between either pizza or warm dunkable bread twists in flavors like Parmesan, garlic, and cinnamon, like deciding between going to the dentist or DMV. So when it comes to giving you the best tasting problem you've ever had, sorry, you're welcome. Order any two or more of Domino's new bread twists or medium two topping pizzas for $5.99 each. Two item minimum. Handmade pan pizzas may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Welcome back to the Duke Well Center. Got a good one brewing here in Arkadelphia. The Reddies trail by three, 51-48 as we return to action after our first media timeout of the second half. 15-50 left in the ball game. Monticello basketball leading 51-48. Reddies led by 14 points from Quan Marshall. He's one point away from a season-high 15. Daniels. Now McDuffie works it to Frey. Frey fakes right back left to Daniels. Left wing behind the arc. Daniels jabs with the right. Skulls for a screen and uses it. Daniels pulls it back. Pass deflected, but it goes to McDuffie. Five to shoot. Frey between the legs. Kicks to Haynes. Haynes baseline. Jay got it. Haynes has a dozen. He averages three this season, but he leads Arkansas Monticello with 12. Four for five from the field. What a big night for Kyler Haynes. That's pretty good defense, too, by Yuri Swinford. There's really not a lot more you can do right there. He closed out hard, was right at the top of the shot. It's just a good shot. Reddy's on offense, just 10 to shoot. Not a whole lot going in this possession. Marshall puts it on the deck. Drives baseline around McDuffie. Cut off, goes to Chenault, puts up the three. Left wing, too strong. Jeremiah Tony goes over the back of Ke Keon Craddock. That's a pretty easy call, and that is Tony's fourth foul with 14.56 to play in this ball game. And if you're Tony, I like the effort, but sometimes you just have to live it to fight another day. He was clearly boxed out, and I think you nailed it, Cyrus. He, you want to try to make a play for your team, but there's just no way you're getting to that rebound without a foul. That's clear as day. The clearest over the back, the over, the clearest over the back these officials are going to have probably in a while. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, you just can't put yourself in that situation with three fouls. Monticello, four for five from the field in the second half. Haynes steps out, heat check three, won't go. And another foul on the Reddies on a jump shooter, Raekwon Rogers. And they just gave they just gave him a flopping warning on his last jump shot, and he did even worse that time, and they called a foul this time. And that'll be Rogers. Not only is that Rogers fourth, that's the, the double cardinal sin. Fouling a three-point jump shooter, and David, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to our monitor catching up to our radio feed here. Is I really want to see that on the monitor. Is are they going to call this? A, they're not going to. They're going to call this a non-shooting foul. They're going to say it was all the way after he landed, which is which makes it even worse non, because he yeah. nonsensical because that means it wasn't. I, I don't. I don't under, I don't understand that call, but that's that's it. That's 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 devastating for Henderson State as they have. Their two best big men now riding the pine with four fouls apiece. Over 14 minutes to play. Daniels, right wing behind the arc, thought about a three. Now McDuffie goes to Frey, left wing on the GAC logo. Frey shovels to McDuffie. McDuffie puts it between the legs, and he carried it. Good defense by Drake Wilkes. The Reddies get it back. Henderson State with the basketball, down five. 53-48, 14-14 left in our bowl game. Marshall picks up his dribble with the right elbow, bounces to Wilkes, far side, Deer. Now Marshall back with it on the Don Dyer Court insignia, right wing, Marshall in and out dribble. Inside goes to Wilkes, Wilkes, one power dribble. Wipe off the shot, unfortunate for Wilkes. 
Good composure down low for the transfer, but foul on the floor. Whistled on Keon Craddock, his third, team's fifth. And Wilkes went to the free throw line to shoot two, but they're going to say that was on the floor. Reddies, Reddies would love a basket here. That's where the patience by Wilkes actually hurts you. If you just go right up there for the more difficult shot, you're probably going to the line for two. Chenault, back to Wilkes, far side. Marshall with it, now top of the key. Marshall, eight to shoot. Marshall pulls up for three, off the mark, missed badly. Maybe a little bit of a force there, there for Marshall. Rebound to McDuffie, UAM the other way. Frey underneath, triple teamed. It's knocked away, Reddy's got it back, stolen by Chenault. Reddy's down five, up the court to Wilkes. Wilkes, the catch and the finish underneath. What a find by Graham Chenault. Stuck it in there. On the baseline and Wilkes, the beneficiary. Reddy's down three. 13-13 left in the ball game. Daniels pulls back, puts up the three, puts it in. You cannot stop that. Miles Daniels has 12 and the lead doubled from three to six. 56-50, 13 minutes left. Offensive foul, Jimmy Elgis and the Reddy's bench can't believe it. Erie Swinford gonna get charged on the dribble handoff. Third foul on Swinford and this is, uh, this is the I think, the tightest refereeing we've seen this season, David. And I just don't know what Yuri's supposed to do right there. Yeah. I mean, he, he's just trying to shield off the ball handler. He has a right to turn his body. That is a really difficult call if you're Henderson State. And now he's got three, while JT and Raekwon both have four. Craddock drives baseline. Miles Daniels missed the three. Rebound Deer up the court to Davenport. Davenport the catch. Back to Chenault. Chenault. Steps inside the arc, halfway down and out. Offensive rebound, Swinford keeps it alive and scores. What a play by Yuri Swinford. He is providing the Reddies with huge minutes. Reddies down four, McDuffie with a push off, creates space and hits the three. David thought there was an arm bar. Other way, Chenault, he check. He tries to answer, can't do it. Underneath, UAM the rebound. Craddock runs away with it. End-to-end -end action, and Craddock is tripped. An inadvert inadvertent trip on the Reddies on Graham Chenault, but that will be a foul on Chenault. Sixth team foul on the Reddies. And they're going to have to go deep into the bench as Jalen Farrell checks in. Farrell seeing the floor for the first time tonight. First time Farrell has seen action since January 25th and the Reddy's blowout win of Watchdog Baptist. And another foul on Graham Chenault. That's going to send Monticello to the free throw line with seven team fouls now on the Reddy's with 12.08 to play in the ball game. We're going to be shooting a lot of free throws down the stretch and that favors UAM. They are the best free throw shooting team in the league. 75.6% top 25 in Division II basketball at the charity stripe. Jones to the line, shooting a one and one. Missed it, got, the, got his own rebound and another foul. And that'll go on Arkansas Monticello, charged to Max Warren and that'll be number four on Warren in just seven minutes. We have had a lot of whistles tonight, David. 20 fouls already called on the Reddies in the game with over 12 minutes left. 17 whistled on Monticello, so it could be a free throw shooting competition down the stretch of this ball game. Reddies are down seven. Monticello's largest lead was nine. Wilkes to the basket, spins inside, rolls it up and in. Drake Wilkes creating and finishing. Wilkes has played well against Monticello this year. He's got four in this one. Reddy's down five, 11.45 to play. McDuffie behind the arc. Cross court, Alvarez Powell, right wing three, missed it. Left it short, and Powell reaches in on Farrell, who was tracking down the rebound, and Farrell will go to the line for a one and one. 
this, this, this might be. I think he shot free throws at Southern Arkansas, Cyrus. Just trying to remember off the top of my head. He has not made one this year. I think he might have taken a couple at Southern Arkansas, or maybe just one. Just took one at Southern Arkansas. He missed the front end of a one and one down at Magnolia back on January 23rd. And Dave, we got a we got a great game developing here in here in Ark Delphi. The Reds are down five. Arkansas Monticello has not cooled off at all. UAM 6 for 10 from the field in the second half. Henderson State just 5 of 15, but the Reddies making so many hustle plays in the offensive glass and just doing everything they can to stay within arm's, an arm's length. And it's really kind of the second unit, Cyrus. I mean, some of your big guns are sitting on the bench and are going to keep being there. I was about to say when Drake scored, he has the ability to do that. And it looks like they may have him run the point here for the next couple of minutes, and he might have to put that scoring hat on. Because right now with JT and Raekwon on the bench, if you're Henderson State, your scoring's got to come from somewhere. You know, it's it's really weird, Cyrus, because Henderson State, you shoot almost 60% in the first half, and at halftime you're thinking, how are we not winning? And then in the second half, you're 5 of 15 to start the half. The other team is shooting 60%, and now you're sitting here thinking, how are we not getting blown away? Yeah, how it's the, just really right. an interesting game. Yeah. I mean, if Henderson State was shooting even close to what they were shooting in the first half right now, they'd probably be winning because they're only down by five. They, they've only been outscored by two points in the second half despite just shooting 33% from the field. Uh, you know, and, and I mean, Monticello, what can you say? Some of those three-pointers they've hit were not necessarily what I would call great looks. They're just great sh individual shots. Uh, there's not a lot you can do about that sometimes on defense. Farrell to the line, shooting a one and one. Got the first. I'm going to give Jalen a little bit of a shout out here as he knocks down that first free throw. I don't think I've seen a player on Henderson's hate team put more hours in the gym than Jalen Farrell does. He doesn't play a lot, but I'm telling everybody that's watching, after every single game, he is in here shooting on the gun. I don't think there's a day that's gone by that I haven't seen him in the gym, so it's good to see him taking advantage of his opportunities here tonight. Two free throws for Farrell. Reddy's down three. Backdoor pass, Haynes, the hoop and the harm. Kyler Haynes continues a career night. Foul on Chenault. Haynes goes to the line to complete the three-point play. Haynes with 14 in this one. Again, he's averaging just three on the season. But we said earlier, everybody on this Monticello roster can score, and Kyler Haynes proving us right. Haynes... A transfer from Arkansas Tech, believe it or not, and this is by far his season high. Swishes in the free throw as he's got 15 now. His previous season high was seven, and guess who that came against, David? The Reddies in this building. Haynes was three for five, had seven points back on January 16th. He loves the Duke Well Center. I'll tell you what, Cyrus, if you didn't know any better or you never watched this team before, you might think he was the best player on their team here tonight. He's been fantastic for them. No doubt. The Reddies back down six. 62-50, Chenault inside to Wilkes. Wilkes had it slapped away by McDuffie. UAM gets it back. That was the first turnover of the second half by the Reddies. They gave it away ten times in the first half. 11 minutes left, Jones to the basket. Won't go, good help defense by Wilkes. Swin for the rebound. Farrell back into the front court for HSU. Swinford pivots, thought about a three, back to Farrell. Now Wilkes, back to Farrell, left wing behind the arc. Farrell drives on Powell. Farrell throws it up wildly. Rebound Monticello, McDuffie comes down with it for his fifth rebound. Alvarez Powell in the front court. Drops it to Howard, faces up from 15 feet. Back and down on the left block. Powell, excuse me, Howard finds Jones. Powell gets it back. Now Daniels. Jones with it on the logo. Daniels thought about the three inside. Gives to Powell, left side, three, won't fall. Rebound tipped into the hands of Wilkes, who pivots and throws to Farrell. Dangerous pass, but Farrell keeps it in bounds, and the Reddies... Back on offense, Xavier Davenport, baseline drive. He's fouled by Powell, and Davenport will go back to the line for his fifth, fifth and sixth free throws of the night. Good take there by X. 
to go straight into the defender. UAM doesn't like the call. They thought he went vertical, but these are two big free throws. And you got to give some props to the second unit from Henderson State. I mean, they have they have stuck with UAM and kept Henderson in this game for a pretty long stretch here. I mean, about five minutes. This is a group right now. I mean, looking at the guys on the court, Graham Chenault, Jalen Farrell, Drake Wilkes, Yuri Swinford. This is a group that I don't know if those four guys have ever been on the court at the same time for this long. And, I mean, they've held steady. UAM has not extended the lead. They've done more than their fair share and given the starting starting group a chance to win this game in the last 10 minutes for Henderson State. You really just can't say enough about the job they've done in, I mean, this extended action that they've had to play tonight due to fouls. Davenport gets them both. It's a four-point UAM lead. Past the midway point of the second half now. Jones on offense for the Bull Weevils. Daniels, the sharpshooter, top of the key behind the arc. Angles left, gives to Frey. Frey looks inside, unavailable. Howard leaves it for Jones. Jones makes his move. Jones to the left block, spins back right. McDuffie puts it up from deep. Missed badly, ready's rebound. Davenport ahead of steam, three on three. Tough pass, intercepted by Frey. UAM gets it back. Frey runs the break. Frey out to Daniels. Jabs right, drives baseline. Cut off good defense by Davenport. UAM on offense. Far side right wing. Frey had it poked away. Riddled the steal, but out of bounds. It'll stay with Arkansas Monticello. 9-13 left in this ball game. And Kavon Key is going to check in for the Reddies. And this will be Key's first meaningful minutes of the season, David. Yeah, by far his first meaningful minutes of the season. A big spot for the true freshman. And I'll say this too, Cyrus. Don't want to jinx the Reddies here, but their half-court defense the last couple of minutes has been much, much better. It's been tough sledding for UAM offensively. Jones. Right wing looking for Daniels. Finds him in the right corner. Jones gets it back. Seven to shoot. Jones inside. Had it poked away. Stolen. Wilkes got a hand on it. Key picked it up. Wilkes gets it back. Wilkes makes his move. Wilkes drives on Howard. Bounce past Davenport for the three. Won't go. And out of bounds. Was poked away by Key. Stick. It'll go back to Arkansas Monticello. Good offense there by the Reddies. Davenport. Had a great look at the three, but the Reddies have been ice cold from the arc in the second half. Now 0 for 5 as a team after going 3 for 4 from the perimeter in the first half. And what's hard for Henderson State here is this is a scoring drought for UAM right now too. UAM scored and hasn't scored in almost three minutes. So this would be normally the time of the game where you could get back into it, maybe go in front to take a lead with a run, but neither team has scored in three minutes. So it's been... Ugly on both ends offensively, but the defense has been really strong both ways. Wilkes checks out. Swinford back in as the Reddies knock it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bull Weevils. 8.36 left in the ball game. 17 on the shot clock. Howard, far side, 18 feet. Now near the right block. Spins, fades away. Rebound weak side, pulled away by Riddle. Henderson State basketball. Riddle behind the back at the elbow. Riddle missed it. It's kept alive, but swatted off the backboard by Key and Henderson State now getting a little overzealous, I believe, David, in the trying to kind of create transition opportunities when they're not there. It has not been a night to remember for Malik Riddle. He's only scored two points, one of five from the field, and that, that one felt a little bit like a force, like a guy who knows he's a scorer that wants to make a play for his team, just needs to get it within the flow of the offense. It'll come for Malik. Eight minutes left. Daniels pulls the trigger and drills it. Miles Daniels heating up. That's his fourth three. He leads all scores with 15. It's back to a seven point UAM lead. Marshall tries to answer long two, miss badly. It'll stay with the Reddies as it caroms out of bounds. Off the Marshall miss, miss. Henderson State down seven, 65-58. 7.40 left here in the Duke Well Center. You're, li you're listening to Reddy's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Java Primo is amazing coffee and so much more. Visit Java Primo Coffee House Cafe and more and discover just what more is. Friday and Saturday nights are ribeye nights. 16 plus ounces of premium bone-in French cut ribeye steak seasoned with espresso rub and grilled to perfection. Nightly dinner menus of pizza, salmon, tuna, steaks, and more begins at 4 p.m. Located on Main Street in Arkadelphia and on Central Avenue in Hot Springs, Java Primo has a little something more just for you. 
Henderson State University is one of the most affordable universities in Arkansas, and we offer the most competitive scholarships in the state. Our caring professors will challenge you to achieve your best potential. With more than 90 student organizations, new residence halls, and the beautiful DeGray Lake State Park just 15 minutes away, you will find the perfect fit at Henderson State. Come see us in Arkadelphia or visit hsu.edu to learn how you can live ready today. Welcome back to the Duke Well Center, Henderson State. Hanging around, trying to make a run. They're down 7, 65, 58, 7, 40 left in the starting unit. Going to check back into the game after Raekwon Rogers and Jeremiah Tony spent about six or seven minutes on the bench after picking up their fourth foul. The bench kept it close for HSU. The ready starters looking to draw ever closer. Rogers. Now Tony. He gets it back far baseline. Rogers picks up his dribble, finds Davenport. Davenport puts it between the legs. Rogers again spins in the lane. Underneath Riddle. Great cut without the basketball for Riddle. And Rogers finds him underneath. Riddle has his second field goal. It's back to a five-point game. And if you're Henderson State, you need to hope that that gets Malik Riddle going here in the last seven minutes of this one. 65-60. UAM leads and has the basketball. 7.07 left. Jones angles to the basket. Cut off at the left block. Picks up his dribble. Howard pivots and goes to Daniels. Daniels, five to shoot. Daniels pulls up for three. Left it short. Great rebound in traffic by Riddle. Riddle pushing tempo, but wisely sl slows it down. Tony inside. Goes to Rogers, and Henderson State slows it down on the offensive end. Reddy's looking for a bucket. Riddle handles. Now Tony, far side Marshall. Bounce pass inside, poked away, and it'll go back to UAM. Marshall, I thought, David, he was wide open for three. I, I don't know could, why he didn't take that shot. I thought he could have let that go. Marshall. I think he was just in, he was thinking, I got to run the play, I got to run the play. I think there's a clear emphasis here after that timeout to get the ball to Raekwon Rogers. I, I think yep. that's what he was thinking, but man, he, that's as open as he's been all game. Yeah, that's just a forced pass, though. I understand where Marshall's coming from, but you just got to take what the defense gives you, and the Reddies turn it over. Back to Monticello. McDuffie. Daniels, left wing behind the arc. Jones drives inside, gets around. Tony blew the layup. Rogers the rebound. Tony kind of had to play Matador defense. Doesn't want to pick up his fifth foul, but Jones lets him off the hook by missing the layup. Reddy's down five again with the basketball, trying to make it a one possession game. Tony has it. He's been quiet in the second half. He makes his move to the baseline. Had it ripped away. Stolen by McDuffie. Up the court. Daniels tracks it down, and McDuffie goes back to Kendall Frey. Arkansas Monticello with the basketball. Henderson State down five. Daniels misses the three. Rebound back to the Reddies. Riddle end to end. Coast to coast. He lays it up and in. Malik Riddle, the one-man fast break. He's got four in a row for HSU, and it's a three-point ball game with 5.15 left in the Duke. Well center. Henderson State trying to take down the division leaders. McDuffie tried to go inside to Howard. Last touch by the Reddies as it floats out of bounds. It'll stay on this end as Jeremiah Tony, Tony and Xavier Davenport check out. Graham Chenault and Yuri Swinford back in for the Reddies. Monticello up by three. 65-62. The Reddies have been playing excellent defense in the last portion of this basketball game. Monticello won for their last nine. Five to shoot. Jones, heat check. NBA three won't fall. Chenault the rebound for the Reddies. Henderson State can tie it with a three. Marshall walks it into the front court. Marshall. Leading the Reddies in scoring, 14. A runner from the free throw line. He drops it in. Looked like Chris Parker there. The Reddies 
Down one, 65-64, four and a half minutes left in the ball game. Monticello with it, far side Jones. The Reddies offering him the three point shot. He gives to Frey, he puts up the three. Back heel won't go. Rebound, found in traffic by Marshall. Henderson State now looking to take the lead. Marshall, Riddle, rise and fire. The three off the mark. Daniels pulls it away. Daniels for the Bull Weevils and a silly foul on Graham Chenault. They'll get him for the block. And Dewan Jones will shoot free throws when we come back. Henderson State down one, 65-64. 3.56 left. You're listening to Reddy's Basketball on the Henderson State Sports Network. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Come visit us at 624 Main Street in Arkadelphia or call 870-246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs. Stop by the Ready Bookstore, located on the HSU campus in the Garrison Center. Open before every game, you can also purchase apparel and gift items under the Ready Bookstore tent during the game. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Ready Bookstore, or online at www.readybookstore.com. Ready Bookstore, proud supporters of Henderson State Athletics. Welcome back to the Duke Well Center. Henderson State has clawed back the second unit for the Reddies. Yuri Swinford, Drake Wilkes, Jalen Farrell, Graham Chenault, all those guys coming off the bench kept it close, David. And since the starters came back into the ball game, it's been a 6-0 Reddies run, turning a seven-point deficit to a one-point deficit as we return from the fourth and final media timeout of the second half. Jawan Jones going to the free throw line, though, for... Arkansas Monticello. The last foul was charged to Graham Chenault, his fourth, team's ninth. Oh, excuse me, David. One and one here for Jones, and he gets the roll. I was about to say, the way that they shoot the ball. It might as well be two. It might as well be two. I, you know, hoping to get the announcer's jinx on him there a little bit, but there's no jinx in this team, uh, at least not, not so far this year. They're just a really good shooting team. And yes, got him. <laughs> little reverse psychology. I like it, David. It remains... A two-point game, 66-64. Reddies with the basketball. Marshall, Chenault, far side in front of the Reddies bench. Bounce pass, Rogers, guarded by Warren. Rogers, far baseline, spinning on Warren. Doubled out to Chenault. Chenault, eight to shoot, pulls up for three, and the lead won't go. Rebound. Dangerously tracked down by Daniels. Could have oh. let, let that go out of bounds. But it looked like his foot was real close to the line from right where we were. We were on right on top of it. I mean, it was a sliver of space right there. Reddy's down two. Monticello basketball, 66-64. Frey puts it between the legs. Darts to the right wing behind the arc. Creates space. Four to shoot. Frey underneath. Got away with a walk, Warren, line drive, jumper won't go, offensive rebound, McDuffie. And UAM gets it back, oh, they got away with a walk. Frey inside, back to Warren. Now Jones again, Jones, top of the key. Spins inside, lost it, stolen by Raekwon. Reddy's run the break, Rogers to the basket, up and in with the left hand, and we're tied, 66-66. Ball don't lie, 2.35 left in the Duke Well Center. And this is all you can ask for through Henderson State. This is a team that's given you a lot of problems over the last couple years, but you've dog fought your way back into this one. Now you got to win it in the last two and a half minutes. Daniels, bounce past Jones, wide open for three. Got it. Jones says, I'll take it and I'll make it. He's got 12. That's his first basket in the second half, and boy, was it ever a big one. Henderson State takes a timeout. Down 369-66. 2.13 left in this ball game in what has developed into an instant classic here in the Duke Well Center. Henderson State 
down three, trying to win their first game in this building over the Bull Weevils since February 13th, 2016. The Reddy's trying to give themselves a, self, themselves a little early Valentine's Day gift with this one and knock off the division leaders, Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils. That last shot by Jones, just such a gut punch if you're Henderson State. You come back, you've clawed your way back and tie this thing up, and it is not tied for very long. It looks like they just lost Jones in the shuffle there. And, man, for a guy that's shooting 36% from three this season, God, he has shot a lot better than that against Henderson State. I mean, he has been – there's a couple guys on this UAM team. Him, McDuffie, I mean, tonight Haynes, but those first two guys especially have De just, just yeah. been ready yep. killers. They have played their absolute best against Henderson State, and with all due respect to them, they have not looked like the same players against a lot of other teams in this league, but for whatever reason, man, they just give Henderson State such problems. That three by Jones answered an 8-1 Reddy's run. Henderson State was down 65-58. to They tied it at 66, but now trailing by three, 69-66. The Reddies will have the basketball. Marshall, the Reddy's senior leader and leading scorer tonight, weaves on the perimeter. Davenport finds Rogers. Rogers faces up on Haynes. Rogers finds Marshall into the lane. Marshall gets around Frey and lays it up with the left hand. Beautiful set out of the timeout by, by the Reddy's. Marshall has a season high, 18 points, six for 12 from the field. Reddy's down one. 69-68. Daniels handling. 140 left in the ball game. Daniels. Now Frey. Left corner. Jones gets a right side screen from Haynes. Jones drives inside. Great verticality by Rogers. And the Reddies get the rebound with Malik Riddle. Reddies down one. Riddle into the front court. Marshall who made it a one-point game just moments ago, comes to get it. Back to Riddle. Now Swinford, far side left wing. Marshall has it over his head, nine to shoot. Davenport, the three in the, for the lead, won't go. Rebound McDuffie. McDuffie up the court to Daniels. Daniels pulls the three and a dagger. No good. McDuffie ripped it out of the hands of Malik Riddle, and after some debate it'll be sent back to the Reddies. Well he was standing out of bounds Cyrus. Yeah. I, that's why the Reddies bench went crazy. I mean a good break there for Henderson to get that ball back and <laughs> Miles Daniels is a great shooter UAM I, that is a questionable shot I'm not sure their staff wanted that shot right there. That would have been a killer. Reddies down one with the ball 69-68 40 seconds left 21 second different shot clock and game clock. Davenport in the paint, floats it up. Won't go, rebound Haynes. Henderson State might have to put on the foul and they do. I think it was the right decision to foul. There was only about two seconds between the shot clock and the game clock after the Reddies missed, so you couldn't afford to play it out. And DeJuan man. Jones will go to the line to shoot a pair. That foul is charged to Yuri Swinford, gonna be his fourth. Xavier Davenport on back-to-back -back possessions got pretty good looks both times to give Henderson State the lead. Once from three, he was open. That second one, the little floater in the lane, he did a good job to not take a charge there as Jones misses the free throw. That's big if you're Henderson State, really big. Got a box out now. If you're JT, who's coming back into the game. Jones third in the league in free throw percentage, 84%. He has missed some big ones down the stretch, just one for four from the line tonight for Jones. Second free throw falls through, but it's a two-point game, and it ended up being a very smart foul by Yuri Swinford. The Reddies get it right back with 28.2 seconds left to go in regulation. Henderson State down 70 to 68 again the Reddies looking for their first win over the Bull Weevils in this building since February of 2016 
I have never seen the Reddies win a regular season game over the Arkansas Monticello Bull Weevils. And I don't think you have either, David. No, it's, it's been tough sledding against this team for Henderson. We've talked about it a lot, but they got a chance here. They have given themselves a chance tonight, and that's about all you could ask for against the first place team in your division if you're the Reddies. And, you know, right here on this possession, to me, I mean, it, it, it's the most obvious thing in the world, and it doesn't matter. I think you have to get a touch to Raekwon here and just let him make a decision one way or the other, but the ball's got to touch his hands in some capacity. Reddy's again down two, 70 68. 28.2 seconds left. And UAM knows this is coming too, so we'll see how they defend it. But I can't imagine it's anything but that if you're Henderson State. Marshall around McDuffie into the lane, puts it up, it falls off, but Rogers, the tip in with the left hand, and we're tied. 70 to 70. And Arkansas Monticello gets a timeout. Raekwon Rogers, the big man down low with his biggest board and biggest points of the day, were knotted up 70 to 70. Maybe his biggest points of the season, Cyrus. And I'll tell you what, uh, you'll remember this well. Reddy's fans will remember this well. That tip in right there gave me flashbacks. That reminds me very much of Raekwon scoring the tying basket in the GAC tournament against this team last year with almost the exact same amount of time left on the clock. Same situation happened for the Reddies in that game too. They had to defend one last possession from UAM who got a chance to take the last shot. They got a stop and won that game. Let's see if they can do it here again tonight. UAM is gonna get the last shot, barring them making an unfortunate error. One more defensive stand if you're Henderson State and you can get this game into overtime. And I think given how this game has ended, and this being in Arkadelphia, that I think that probably favors Henderson State. And that was a pretty that was a that was a pretty good look by Marshall. It was. Um, he got straight to the basket. Yeah, really, just got right around McDuffie, who who didn't uh, didn't want to send Marshall to the free throw line with a chance for a one and one. And I'll tell you what, Cyrus, uh, that shot by Marshall and the last two by Xavier Davenport. I mean, Henderson got three good looks. Yeah. I mean, even if even if Raekwon doesn't tip that in. I don't think you can be too upset with any of those three chances to, to tie or take the lead if you're the Reddies. All three of those are right on the rim, so close to falling, and finally Raekwon's able to get a big paw up there and poke it back. And now it's got to be solid if you're Henderson State. You do not want this game to end on some sort of foul where you give them a chance to win this at the line. 15.9 seconds left. Shot clock's off. UAM with the basketball, 70-70. to 70. Jones for the Bull Weevils, runs it into the front court. 10 seconds left, gets a left side screen, hedged by Rogers, between the legs, top of the key. Drives base, drives to the right elbow. Behind the arc, slips, falls, puts it between the legs. It's poked away, and traveling violation called on Jones. What amazing defense by the Reddies. 0.2 seconds left, and Henderson State could get a miracle shot and they might go add some time on the clock. Well, how about the defense by Jeremiah Tony in particular? He got switched onto the ball handler with four fouls. And he, I mean, fantastic. You can't ask for better to make him dribble it out like that, go to the ground. When he blew that whistle, I just about had a heart attack, was afraid they oh, might have called an awful foul, but they got it right. He went to the ground, and now it looks like, man, .2. You might get lucky and get a full second, probably more like .8, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I don't, there's no there's no time for a dribble. It's got to be catch and shoot. Has to be. I think you throw it to the rim. With yep. Raekwon Rogers and, and guys like JT and Malik Riddle who can leap. Yep. I mean, I think you just throw it to the rim and hope for the best. I, I agree, David. Or, or or maybe maybe you get somebody just curling around a screen and throw up a bit, throw up a prayer. All right, so it's definitely got to be a tip now. Yeah, with no, with no time added, it has to be a tip. It can't be a shot. Yep, Not no enough time. time to get a shot off, and it looks like they're going to put Henry Blair in, who's a good passer, to try and get this thing up at the rim. The only thing, if you're Henderson, is you got to make sure somebody touches this pass, otherwise UAM would get a chance right. from that exact same spot yep. to tip this thing in. Blair going to throw it down court, oh. and... It tipped somebody, time runs out. That is actually a pretty good pass by Henry Blair. I mean, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it, that, that kind of – we're going to go to overtime. Bizzle ran out on regulation, to be clear. But that – he kind of threw it up. You know, I don't know if you guys played this in South Carolina growing up. Remember that game, Jackpot? I don't know if you call it, called it 500. He played it at recess. You just threw it up there, and uh, and, and hopefully you get a tip, and a, a random fingertip or um, an eyelash, and it goes in. So Henderson State, um, at the end of the day – Henderson State is happy to be going to the oh, overtime period. Absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah, I didn't mean to confuse anybody who might be listening on the radio, but that was a pretty good pass. He put it right on the corner of the square. I mean, that at least had the opportunity where if somebody touched it, maybe you get a lucky bounce. But Henderson State, a great finish to get this thing into overtime. Showed a lot of guts considering JT and Raekwon both sat for a long stretch, almost 10 minutes, both with four fouls. They had four around the 15-minute mark, so Henderson survives, and I mean, now you got a chance to win this game, and you need this one if you're Henderson State. This would be a huge boost for this team. I mean, talk about the defense by the stretch, uh, down by the Reddies down the stretch of this ballgame. The Reddies held Watchdog Baptist to just two points down the stretch in their Monday win. Monticello was up 62 to 56 with 11 and a half minutes to go in this game. Mon they also got a three by Miles Daniels with eight minutes to go to make it 65-58. So UAM has scored five points. They scored five points in the last eight minutes of regulation. This might be the best defensive stretch of the season by the Reddies, who are happy to go into overtime, tied 70-70, to -70, considering, like I said, they were down 65-58 with eight minutes left. Absolutely they are. I mean, I the defense has been fantastic here in the second half. We said at halftime, you can't let UAM shoot 56% again, and they certainly did not. Now, if you're Henderson State, you just got to find a way to dig deep and win this game. Rodgers and Howard to tip. One by Rodgers. The tip a little bit more important in overtime than it is to start the game. Henderson State gets the first crack at it in the extra period. Tony, dangerous bounce pass, far side to Marshall. Marshall makes his move, gets inside, lost control. He was fouled from behind. And that'll be charged to Dewan Jones. I thought they were going to get McDuffie trailing the play, but Jones picks up his fourth, and Quan Marshall will head to the free throw line for some free throws. Is this going to be a one and one or two? Oh, they are going to give him two. It's going to be two. It's uh, He just put up the fingers for two, so they're calling that in the act of shooting. That's that's a big call for Henderson State. They needed that, and uh, he cashes in. That's the first lead for Henderson State, I think, since the first half. Um, you, you are correct, David. Marshall to the free throw line. One more. Got them both. And that gives Marshall a career high. 20 points. What a time to get it. Reddy's up two, 20 seconds into the overtime period, 72 to 70. Jones, left wing for UAM. Behind the arc, now Daniels on the GAC logo, left wing. Bounces it to Howard. Howard, 16 feet away near the left block. Howard fakes left, fades away to the right, and gets it to go. Beautiful move by Howard. He's been quiet for most of the evening. Seven points now in 19 minutes. That's great defense by Raekwon, but just a better shot by Howard. Raekwon was right there. Riddle handling, leaves it for Davenport. Davenport guarded by Jones. Tony drives baseline on McDuffie, and an offensive foul. And that is a tough call. I thought McDuffie was still sliding his feet, but they're gonna get Tony for putting his shoulder down, and that is number five on Jeremiah Tony. He fouls out. With four minutes to go in the overtime period, he'll be replaced by Yuri Swinford, and Swinford's got four fouls as well. Tony ch checks out nine points in 19 minutes for Tony. All nine coming in the first half for the Reddy Senior. Now the referee's headed to the scores table to Confirm that that was, in fact, Tony's fifth. Oh, that is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching that replay back for the first time, the live stream is a little delayed to real action. And, I mean, that's 
That is a brutal fifth foul for Jeremiah Tony if you're Henderson State. Brutal. Bull Weevils basketball, tie ball game. 3.50 left in overtime. Daniels pivots, drives left, step back, long two, missed it. And it will stay with UAM. He missed it so badly that it kind of bounced off Malik Riddle's chest. Yeah. Didn't draw anything. And Daniels is a really good shooter. He He's taken some questionable shots here down the stretch. And that was a long two from Daniels and a tough one. UAM gets it back, 12 on the shot clock. Dangerous pass deflected by Marshall. Jones gets it back for the Bull Weevils. Five to shoot, top of the key. Jones spins between the legs. Two to shoot, had it poked away. Marshall to steal. Marshall slows it down. He picked up his dribble. And now gets it back from Swinford. Tie game, 72 all, 320 left in overtime. Marshall in and out dribble to the basket. Left it short, good defense by Frey. Rebound back to Monticello. McDuffie, near side, left wing. Frey leaves it for Jones. Jones double screen, McDuffie and Howard. Jones matched up by Rogers. One hands it to Daniels. Ha Howard down low, catches, doubled inside and scores anyway. Howard has all four for UAM in the extra period and UAM back in front 74-72. Henderson State takes a timeout with 2.45 left in OT. A little bit of a game rewind. Henderson State looked solid early. They led 15-9 and eventually led 25-21. to UAM went on a 16-3 run to make it 37-28 near the end of the first half. Henderson State then countered with a 13-7 run of their own and trailed by three, 44-41 at the halftime break. It, it stayed pretty close back and forth basketball for most of the second half. Arkansas Monticello looked to be on the verge of pulling away with about eight minutes left as they took a seven point lead with a Dewan Jones three. That made it that made it 65 to 58. That was UAM's largest lead of the second half, but Henderson State clawed back after that. They went on an eight one run to make it close and eventually tied the ball game with 15 seconds left off a second chance tip opportunity from Raekwon Rogers. Henderson State took the lead in the overtime period, 72-70, but Monticello with four in a row, all from Lemmy Howard, and the Reddy's back in familiar territory so far this evening, trailing Monticello, who has held the lead for 27 and a half minutes. Henderson State has been in front for 11 minutes. Back from our timeout, the Reddy's wanted to talk it over. The Reddy's will have it in the front court. Reddy's playing without Jeremiah Tony. He fouled out earlier in the overtime period. Marshall picks up his dribble. Swinford has it. Swinford bounces to Riddle, 40 feet away. Riddle guarded by Jones. Not a whole lot going on this possession for the Reddy's. Riddle goes to Rogers, six to shoot. Rogers jabs with the left, lost it. That, that is a rough possession out of the timeout if you're Henderson State. Just nothing going there and then ends up with a turnover with no shot. That is that is a brutal possession if you're the Reddies. The Reddies turned it over 10 times in the first half, just three times in the second half. But two giveaways for the Reddies here in the extra period. Monticello ball, Bull Weevils up two, 74-72. Jones. Arcs to the right wing and away from the ball. Offensive foul on the Bull Weevils and that might be number five if it's on the right guy. I thought for I thought, sure that was on Lemmy Howard. But I thought Lemmy Howard had... I thought he had four, but uh, they're saying he has... They're saying he... I guess he had three. They, they may have given a foul to somebody else at a TV timeout, David. Either way, the Reddies get it back down two. Riddle drives on side, puts it up, puts it in. Malik Riddle, a soft touch off the window. We're tied at 74, 145 left in OT. Henderson State 
trying to beat Monticello for the first time in five years in the regular season. Kendall Frey will go to the line after a baseline drive. He got Malik Riddle up in the air. That'll be Riddle's first. And that's a big call for Henderson because that could have easily been on Raekwon Rogers and that would have fouled him out. I think they both were holding their breath to see who that was on. Malik was trying to take credit for it. And luckily they give it to Malik in that situation. Frey gets the shooter's roll on the free throw. Frey up over 80% from the line this season. Now 12 of 14 on the year. Second free throw, Swish. Back to a two-point bowl we will lead. 76-74, 1.35 left in OT. Marshall into the half court for the Reddies. He's got a career-high 20. Swinford looks for Rodgers. Unavailable, Davenport over to Riddle. Riddle baseline drive. Underneath, won't go. Rodgers can't get the tip. Henderson State misses two layups. UAM clears the rebound. Bowl Weevils basketball. 1-10 left in OT. Bull Weevils up two. Riddle and Rogers both missing layups. Dumped down to Howard on the right block, 12 feet away. Howard spins on Marshall and a blocking foul on Marshall. That'll be his second. It'll send UAM to the line to shoot two. Lemmy Howard, three for three from the stripe so far. Looking to go into double digits would be the fifth bull weevil to score 10 or more. Howard, got it. One more on the way for Howard. Another free throw makes it a two possession game. Howard 58% from the line on the season. He's five for five tonight. 78-74, Monticello with a two possession lead under 55 seconds to play in overtime. Rogers to the basket, had it ripped away by Frey. Bull Weevil steal it and have it back. Father time a factor, and Malik Riddle fouls Dewan Jones, who will go back to the line to shoot two more free throws. And UAM headed towards an escape act here in Arkadelphia after the Reddies forced overtime with a brilliant comeback at the end of regulation. Jones, though, has been suspect from the line, uncharacteristically, two for five so far this evening. Missed it, left it short. Jones now two for six from the line, and that's from the third best free throw shooter in the league at 84%. The Reddies take a timeout, and we'll take a 30-second break here on the Henderson State Sports Network. SEM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for nearly 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the new dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Hall. This year, SEM Architects have been privileged to work on the restoration of the Caddo Center cafeteria that will house an exhibit of Native American artifacts from the Joint Educational Consortium Hodges Collection. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial, interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at SCMarchitects.com. Welcome back to the Duke Well Center, Henderson State, down four with 42 point seconds left in the overtime period. The Reddies trailed 65 to 58 with eight minutes left. Held Arkansas Monticello to just five points in the last eight minutes. They got a game tying. Tip layup from Raekwon Rogers with 15 seconds left in regulation to force overtime, but Henderson State has struggled offensively in the extra period. Yeah, I mean, it, when you get into situations like a five-minute overtime against a team this good, uh, you have to you have to play your best as Henderson State in this overtime period. Unfortunately, I mean, they played so well in the second half in terms of defensively, they played great didn't turn the ball over and here in the overtime period so far it just has not been their best 
they've turned the ball over three times and only taken three shots. It's it's tough to win overtime periods when it's only five minutes long and you have the same amount of turnovers as shots. So only one made shot from the field for Henderson. They've also been whistled for four fouls here in four minutes in overtime. Jones gets the roll on the second free throw. It's a five-point game. Henderson State doesn't need a three, but they need a bucket, and they need it quickly. Under 40 seconds left, Marshall. Davenport with it, left wing, step back, gets his man in the air, puts up the three, left it short. It's loose underneath, Davenport gets it back, missed the layup. Howard is fouled, and Howard will shoot free throws on the other end. As Howard will have a chance to make it a three possession game for Arkansas Monticello. UAM up five, two free throws makes it a seven point game and Henderson State will have to put on the miracle comeback without Yuri Swinford. He just picked up his fifth foul. Looks like Drake Wilkes will check into the game to replace Swinford. Swinford the second ready to foul out. Swinford joining Tony as a permanent spectator. Jeremiah Tony fouled out for the Reddies with nine points. All of them coming in the first half. Howard has been excellent from the line today. Five for five, and that's from a 58% free throw shooter. You'd think he's due to miss at least one, and he does. That one didn't look great, hit the glass first. Henderson State needs to rebound if there is a miss here. That gives you just a tiny little bit of a pulse if you're Henderson State, because even with a make, it'll still be a two possession game. Howard missed them both. Rebound McDuffie for UAM. McDuffie is fouled, and the Reddies can't believe they let Howard miss both, both free throws and didn't, didn't get the rebound. Talk about a gut punch and Denzel McDuffie who has just tortured the Reddies over and over. Might just put in the dagger free throws as he hits the first one more, makes it a seven point and a three possession game. McDuffie with another rebound. Give him 15 points and nine boards. Seven point game, 81-74. 24 seconds left, Reddy's into the front court. Marshall to the basket. Gets the layup to fall, 18.4 seconds left. Monticello other way into the front court. Dewan Jones runs out of trouble. McDuffie fouled by Wilkes. And McDuffie will go back to the line to effectively end this ball game. 11.7 seconds left. Two more free throws for McDuffie. Puts the lead back to seven. Another three possession game and there just isn't enough time for the Reddies to get three shots off as long as Arkansas Monticello doesn't foul. McDuffie hits the first of two. Five players in double figures tonight for Monticello. Jones, Daniels, McDuffie, Howard, and Haynes, all in double figures. The Reddy's got 22 from Quan Marshall and 10 from Raquan Rogers. No other player in double figures for the Reddy's. McDuffie misses the second, six point game, 10 seconds left, Marshall. Davenport puts up the three, was partially blocked. Rebound Howard, he outlets the fray. Bull Weevils have it, they're gonna win it. Henderson State fights back, but Monticello continues its regular season domination in this series. The Bull Weevils win their 11th straight regular season meeting over the Reddies. This one in overtime, 82 to 76. Henderson State fights back. But Arkansas Mon Monticello throws the final punch and the Reddies fall by six. We'll take a break and be back with the Wendy's post game show on the Henderson State Sports Network. Sodexo would like to invite you to a new dining experience on the beautiful campus of Henderson State University. Come dine with us in our new dining hall or retail locations, including Starbucks. Perfect for your break times. 
grab a quick lunch at Chick-fil-A where it's always a pleasure to serve you. And check out the all-new Ready Grill. Fresh ingredients made to order and certain to put you in that ready spirit. Sodexo, encouraging you to eat well, live ready. What if you could help someone start a small business, make a family's dream of home ownership a reality, or even help a young child learn the importance of saving? By banking with Southern Bank Corp, you're supporting your own financial journey and also families in your community dreaming of a brighter future. That's what it means when we say we're wealth builders for everyone, and we hope you'll join us in ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to build a brighter future. Stop by any of our locations or visit us on the web at banksouthern.com to learn more. Southern Bank Corp, wealth builders for everyone. Member FDIC, Equals Lender. Close your eyes. Unless you're driving, then that's dangerous. But everyone else, close your eyes. Picture this. It's a Monday afternoon. You're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the smiling Domino's employee $7.99, plus tax, of course, of your hard-earned cheddar. You feel invigorated and alive. Now, picture this. It's a Friday. You're standing at the counter at Domino's as they hand over a delicious, cheesy, melty, hot, large, three-topping pizza. You hand the same Domino's employee more cash than you did on Monday? But that doesn't make any sense. But then, a radio commercial comes from on high and says, Domino's is now extending its $7.99 large three-topping carryout deal to all day, every day. You fist pump into the air, punching the roof of your car. You are alive again, but your fist hurts. But you're still thinking about Domino's. Carryout only. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, and charges may vary. Welcome back to Arkadelphia. Henderson State falls on a heartbreaker. They go down in overtime to Arkansas Monticello. The Reddies fall by 6, 82 to 76. The Reddies fought back. They held Monticello to just five points in the last eight minutes of regulation. They got a tying tip from Raquan Rogers to make it 70 all. With 15 seconds left, they played. An exquisite defensive possession at the end of regulation. Didn't allow Monticello to get off a shot. But Henderson State just did not have the answers offensively in the extra five minutes in the overtime period. Henderson State just two for eight in OT from the field. Two field goals, three turnovers for the Reddies in OT. And they are outscored 12-6 to six in the free basketball period. The Reddies cannot get over that Arkansas Monticello hump, at least in the regular season. 11 straight losses to the UAM Bull Weevils. The Reddies were looking for their first win over UAM in this building since 2016, but they were denied by a very talented, very resilient Arkansas Monticello Ball Club. You're listening to the Wendy's Post Game Show. Wendy's is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. Stop by Wendy's at 3130 Pine Street after the game. Wendy's is fresh, never frozen. The Reddies fall by 682 to 76. Henderson State shot 43% for the game, 27 of 63. Henderson State shot very well in the first half, but really came down to earth in the second period and the overtime period. Reddy's just 11 of 31 in the second half and 2 of 8 in OT. So 13 of 39, 33% from the field in the second half and overtime for Henderson State. The Reddy's were 3 for 4 from 3 in the first half and missed all 10 threes they took in the second half and overtime. Finished 3 of 14 from long distance. The Reddies, though, were excellent from the foul line, 19 of 21, just over 90%. Arkansas Monticello for the game, 25 of 54, 46%, 11 of 27 for three, 41%, 21 of 31 from the foul line, 68%. Monticello was held to 35% shooting in the second half after 56% shooting in the first. Monticello only hit two field goals in the overtime period, but they were 8 for 12 from the line. And they outscored the Reddies 12 to 6 in overtime. They win 82 to 76. Individual leaders, the Reddies 
Just had two in double figures to the Bull Weevils' five. The Reddies got a career-high 22 points from Quan Marshall, 22 from Marshall, breaking a career-high 19. Marshall, 7 of 15 from the floor, 1 of 3 from 3, 7 of 7 from the foul line, two rebounds and three assists for Marshall. Raquan Rogers, a very efficient 10 points, 5 of 7 from the field, eight boards, two assists and a steal for Rogers. Jeremiah Tony, nine points, all of them in the first half. Tony, Tony finishes four for nine, 0 for one from three, one for two from the line, three rebounds and a steal. Malik Riddle and Yuri Swinford each had eight. Riddle got hot late. He started one for five, hit three of his last five, finished four for 10, missed his only three he took, tied for the team lead, eight rebounds for HSU. Yuri Swinford, eight points. After not scoring in the last three games, Swinford two for two, hit the only three he took, three of four from the line, five rebounds for Swinford, four of them offensive, one assist for Swinford. Other scores for the Reddies, six points from Xavier Davenport. Davenport, a tough night shooting the basketball, 0 for 7, 0 for 4 from three. Davenport's points, all six of them came from the line. He was six of six from the line, but... Did not see the ball go through the basket in any other way. Graham Chenault, five points off the bench, two for six from the floor, one of four from three. Drake Wilkes had four, two for three from the floor. Damian Deer and Jalen Farrell each had two for the Reddies. Josh Mason, excuse me, Damian Deer and Jalen Farrell had two for the Reddies, if I misspoke. Thomas Lobmiholchich, Josh Mason, and Kavon Key did not score for Henderson State. Arkansas Monticello. Led by Denzel McDuffie. McDuffie had his season high 19 points twice against the Reddies in the two previous meetings, and McDuffie continues to torture the Reddies. 17 points for McDuffie, 5 for 9 from the field, 1 for 2 from 3, 6 for 7 from the line, 9 rebounds to lead the team as McDuffie iced it from the line from for Monticello tonight. McDuffie was one of four UAM scorers in double figures. Kyler Haynes got a season high, 15 points off the bench in 17 minutes. Haynes, five for seven, two for four from three, three for three from the foul line, four rebounds for Haynes. Miles Daniels also had 15, cooled off at the end, finished five for 14, four of 10 from three, one of one from the line, four rebounds for Daniels. Dewan Jones, solid work. At the office, 14 points for Jones, 4 for 10 from the field, 3 for 5 from 3, 3 of 7 from the line from Jones, though. The third best free throw shooter in the league, 84% coming into this one, just 3 of 7 from the line. He left the door open for the Reddies down the stretch. Jones also led all players with 4 assists. Lemmy Howard was the last UAM player in double figures. He had 11, 3 for 4. Five for seven from the foul line. Kendall Frey added six. Max Warren had four. Alvarez Powell, Keon Craddock, and Blakely Cobb did not score for UAM. Henderson State dominated in the rebounding battle, out rebounding Monticello by 14, 43 to 29. Reddies with 15 offensive rebounds and 16 second chance points. Arkansas Monticello, seven offensive rebounds and six second chance points for the Bull Weevils. Monticello, 11 assists to 13 turnovers. Henderson State, again, struggling in that assist to turnover mar margin. Reddy's just eight assists to 16 turnovers. Monticello, 14 points off of turnovers. Henderson State, 11 points off of turnovers. Arkansas Monticello, six steals. Henderson State with nine steals. UAM with three blocks. Henderson State with just one rejection. Henderson State dominated in the paint, outscoring UAM 34-18. to 18. The Reddies also dominated in the fast break, outscoring the Bull Weevils 16 to zip in fast break points. UAM had the advantage in bench scoring 32 points for the Bull Weevils bench to just 21 for the Reddies. We'll take... Another break and continue on the Wendy's postgame show when we come back on the Henderson State Sports Network. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia is a proud sponsor of Henderson State Athletics. We offer the best American-made vehicles, Ford, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. 
We have the largest selection and lowest prices, and we're the only dealer who give you tires for life with every new car you purchase. Come see the Southwest Auto Collection at 10th Street in Arkadelphia, or go online at idriveswa.com. The Southwest Auto Collection in Arkadelphia. Twin Rivers Health and Rehabilitation. Locally owned and operated in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. Our family is committed to yours. Our experienced rehabilitation team specializes in physical, occupational, and speech therapy, all working together to get you home. Call and book a tour with us today at 870-246-6337 or visit our website at TwinRiversHR.com. Again, that's TwinRiversHR.com. Welcome back to Arkadelphia Henderson State Falls in a tight one. The Reddies go down 82 to 76 in overtime. The Reddies fall to 5 and 7 both overall and in the GAC. The Reddies fought back in this one. Great defense down the stretch, but Monticello outscored the Reddies 12 to 6 in overtime. The Reddies we're led tonight by 22 points from Quan Marshall. As I'm now joined by Reddy's head coach Jimmy Elgis. Uh, coach, we'll start at the at the last portion of really the last half of the second half, um, and it was more of the same for the Reddies in terms of great defense down the stretch and regulation. You guys were um, excellent against Watchdog Baptist on Monday night uh, down the stretch. You held Watchdog Baptist to just uh, excuse me. Tonight you hold Arkansas Monticello to just five points in the last eight minutes. Um, impressive stretch of defensive basketball. It's hard to say, you haven't watched the film, but would you say that's one of the better stretches of defensive work you've seen from this team um, I think so, this season? Cyrus. Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, they're, they're a talented group of guys. They move the ball. They have a lot of guys that can play off the deck. Um, they put you in some disadvantages with the versatility of Denzel McDuffie. And, and um, you know, I thought our guys, you know, competed. I thought we, uh, we got some key stops when we needed to, especially at the end of, of regulation. That's good for the growth of the team. However... Um, we got to make sure that we, uh, when you get layups or when you get, when you got a chance to cash in offensively, let you cash in. And uh, we had a couple uh, breakdowns just with our positioning in overtime um, that we we're a little disappointed in. But um, I told the guys, I said, we're all disappointed, right? We're all upset. Um, but even though we got beat, I, I still see growth with our team. I still see a lot to get better at. You know, we got to have positive. We got to have positive play when guys get in the game. And um, you know, I, I, I think we we got some of that, but we got to be a little bit more consistent. So, um, like, I'm not. We're not going to uh, hang our head. No one's going to feel sorry for us. We're going to keep learning, getting better as a team, and uh, and keep fighting. You said, you know. Look at the positives, and uh -huh. and you got you got to stay positive um, as a, as a team. And I thought one of the big positives was uh, some big minutes from your second unit tonight. Really, in the second half, you know, Jeremiah Tony picks up his fourth foul, uh, as do, and and the Raekwon Rogers, 18 seconds later, picks up his fourth right. um, with with 14 minutes to go. It's a five point game. Then, um, right. you know, Drake Wilkes, Jalen Farrell, uh, Graham Chenault, some guys who haven't seen tons of consistent minutes uh, this season come in the game, and by the time Raekwon Rogers comes back, it's actually just a four-point deficit. I right. thought the bench um, in a tough spot was really really, I don't know if grew up is the right right yeah. phrase, but yeah. I thought they were great, really really good tonight. Yeah, you know, you're right. I think that, you know, Graham's got to continue to play, um, you know, minutes under the fire and, and keep producing for us. I think he, he did a good job with that. Um, I think that Drake gave us some minutes, you know, in the first half a little bit where he scored it and made some good plays. Um, Jalen came in and, 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 and made some free throws and, and got us down the road a little bit. You know, we had to get Cave on in there, and I don't think he hurt us. Um, so you're right. I, I think in Yuri, you know, Yuri's really growing uh, before our eyes a little bit. He needs to, to keep rebounding like he does and finishing plays. He's a live wire. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. You know, we need <clears throat> we need everybody. That's what we just told that. You know, we played everybody. We had all 15 guys. I think 14 guys. Carson's hurt right now. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone had a chance. And – you know, it stings, it's upsetting, but we've got to look at the small things um, that we didn't execute very well and improve on those small things, and collectively they're a big deal. Um, I thought that Monticello did a really good job of pressuring us and, and, uh, and denying some reversals, and we got, you know, we got a, we have a green light. You can always go by, 
anybody that's out there. We don't make the guys run the plays. And mm. You got to go. You got to go to the paint. You can't be right. making north. You know, east and west. You got to go north and south. Sure. And so, a little disappointed that we didn't get open when we should have gotten open. Didn't deliver the ball when we should have delivered the ball. We'll get better at that as we go. Um, but um, there's definitely some positives. It stings. Doesn't take it away. We're not happy. But as our team continues to grow, um, the fact that we saw a pretty good fight, saw some stops down the stretch, uh, they just got to keep executing our way through that overtime and cash in when we get plays at the basket. Biggest uh, op- offensive performance of, of his career for Quan Marshall tonight. Plays 39 minutes, 22 points, breaks a previous career high of 19. Um, Quan scored in double figures first three games of the season. Upper body injury, uh, comes back little struggle offensively uh, how big is it for the readies to get uh, him scoring his full potential yeah he's got a he's got to be a good player for us you know he's a, he's a tough he's heart and soul of the guys he's the most vocal guy um, I think the guys recognize how tough he is I think they recognize that um, his competitive spirit and we need him to we need him like we need you know we need his production we need everybody you know we are like we and I have talked about our margin of error is not very big that's okay you know you've got to be really good with your details and while I think we're getting better, it uh, wasn't good enough to win tonight. Um, and so we'll have to learn. We'll have to, to, to teach the guys a little bit tomorrow and then, uh, and then play. I think we're at Harding on Saturday. Yep. So, um, you know, we got to keep plugging. Coach, I appreciate the time. We'll see you on Saturday. Okay, Cyrus. Thank you. That was Reddy's head coach, Jimmy Elgus. The Reddy's fall and a heartbreaker tonight, 82-76. to They fight back in regulation, hold Monticello to just five points in the last eight minutes of action. But Monticello outscores HSU in the extra period, 12 to 6, and the Ruddies fall to 5 and 7 in GAC play. We'll take a 60 second break and jump around the GAC with a scoreboard update and then wrap things up on the Wendy's Post Game Show. You're listening to Ruddies Basketball on the Henderson State Sports ne- Network. What if I said you could help start a small business, make a family's dream of home ownership a reality, or even help a young child learn the importance of saving? Well, if you're banking with Southern Bancorp, you're already doing this and more. Southern Bancorp is a community development bank unlike any other in the state. We were founded on the belief that wealth building is for everyone. That's why we offer a wide variety of financial tools to help people along their path to economic opportunity, no matter their starting point. And when you open Open a checking or savings account with us, explore small business lending, or get a home loan through 